Welcome. Hello. Uh, I have no idea what to expect, and I've never done a podcast, so <laughs> I get my if I'm a bit off. But oh, you're good, man. You're good. It's uh, it's fine. We'll uh, we'll just we're just having a casual conversation about your airsoft experience and how you got into uh, being a photographer uh, in airsoft. You know, so we'll start with, yeah. uh, usually what I do is, um, we'll, uh, we'll go over kind of like your background, you know, how you, you know, where you grew up, that kind of thing. And kind of what led you into where you're at now, you know? So are you, are you, you well, you're in the UK. Um, yeah, you're... from, uh, Scotland, the good oh, okay. part of the UK. If you ask any Scottish person, <laughs> uh, born, born here, always lived here. Probably always live live here. I love Scotland. That's brilliant. Good. It's always Excuse it's me. always good. Yeah, no problem. It's always good to uh, you know uh, appreciate where like your roots, where you're from, mm -hmm. where Definitely. you grow up. You know, uh, root for the home team. I always say kind of thing, and uh, you know it should be it should be that way. You know. Yeah, uh, I quite like Scotland because it's got. It's just some audio. Uh, you know, it's got it's got everything you could ever really want. It's got great cities. It's got great outdoors. It's got like a fair range of weather. Like it's Scotland's very well known for being like really cold and rainy, but see during the summer it's like blistering hot, and then during the winter it's just absolutely freezing. So you get it all in the year. Okay. Uh, oh, so it's not like. I've been I've been in America. I've felt like desert heat. That is, I don't know how anyone could live there. That's awful. Because <laughs> we went, we did like a road trip down, uh, down like the west the west coast. Yeah. Then for like uh, LA, San Francisco, places like that, and it was Palm Springs. That is the hottest place I've ever been, and that was hell. Oh yeah. It must be like it's like a Mars or something. Jesus. <laughs> now, like Scottish uh, blood is not prepared for that. I'm but, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's a hot and dry, and uh, you know I spent quite a bit of time in Palm Springs. Uh, me and my buddies oh, used yeah. to go out there. I was stationed the, my last duty station, uh, my last couple years in the military. I was at uh, I was in California, and so I was uh, a couple hours, a few hours away from you know drive away from uh, Palm Springs. We used to go out there for a weekend and sleep literally in the desert, like in the sand. We'd find a, a dried up creek bed and sleep in that because at night uh, it cools off quite a bit and that wind comes through the... Uh... Yeah, I've heard that. It's like freezing in the desert, which yeah. is such a strange thought, but I Isn't suppose it? like, there's, there's nothing there. It's why it's, it's why it's a desert, I suppose. So the, the sand, you know, doesn't hold. It's not really dense, right? Mm -hmm. So it's real porous, obviously. So it doesn't really hold the heat from the daytime. So during the day, you'll burn your fucking feet off walk if you walk barefoot on the sand. But as soon as that sun goes down and that wind's blowing across the desert sand, it, that sand cools off really quickly. So uh, it's it doesn't um, it doesn't stay hot there at night, you know. Yeah. It'll be well, like in the summer. It's warm. It's not freezing, freezing. But um, when it gets like uh, fall, uh, close to winter. It'll be hot during the day, and then actually cold at night. I went through uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, which is not far from you know Palm Springs, from Cali, and I drove. Let's see, we drove through the mountains, and when I left, well, we were driving from California through. Well, we're driving all the way across America, from Cali to from the West Coast to the East Coast. And we drove, we left uh, California, like Southern California at eight o'clock at night. It was 82 degrees, okay, in Cali. We got to Flagstaff, Arizona, which I think the previous day it was like close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But we got there at six in the morning. We came through the mountains. And in Flagstaff, Arizona, at six in the morning, it was... 26 degrees out i had no clue the guy i was driving with we were driving a u-haul truck uh it was my brother-in-law actually 
And I said, hey, man, pull over. I mean, there's nothing around. It's all desert. Okay. <laughs> I said, pull over, man. I got to take a piss. I had a tank top and shorts on. Of course, been in the truck all night. We didn't know. I didn't know what temperature it was. We didn't have smartphones. Okay. This was, uh, yeah. or navigation. This was 1994. <laughs> so uh, I get it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I got out to take a piss and I was like, whoa, hold on now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we didn't have jackets or nothing, you know, so, uh, I'm taking a piss in shorts and a tank top. It was like, you could see the steam coming off my piss. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. It's nice, nice image. <laughs> Still get people like that in, in Scotland too. Like, it'll be snowing out. It was snowing like last week and there was still people in shorts and t-shirt. I'm like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? <laughs> people are here built different like they don't care right well i grew up in a cold state so cleveland ohio uh is where me and my wife grew up and it was uh you know we were used to the cold you get a lot of snow up in that area from lake erie and stuff like that so um you know being cold all the time like i used to wear shorts and a t-shirt in january mm -hmm. you know going to work and stuff yeah you're used to that like right. that was the biggest culture shock when i went to uh florida also, we're coming from a very cold climate, going into that really hot climate. You know, right. we're like sweating instantly and putting on like shorts and t-shirts. And then there's the locals putting on like jackets. And they're like, oh, it's kind of cold out. I'm like, how are you cold? Like, I can't do this. I'm, I'm dying here. <laughs> oh, it was funny when uh, my uncle used to live in Arizona in Sun City. And it gets, you know, most of Arizona gets hot as hell. So uh, he was used to the 110, 120 degree weather during the day. And at mm. night, it would drop down to 75, you know, um, but there's no humidity. So it's real dry heat. So when the sun goes down, if the wind blows a little bit, you know, 75, if you're used to the 100 degree weather, 75 will feel kind of chilly. So he's like, yeah, it got pretty cold last night. It was 75. I was like, what? <laughs> if that's cold, man, we're in trouble. What the hell? I think another layer of that, you're obviously talking about like Fahrenheit, like we use Celsius here. So like. You know, 20 degrees sounds really hot to us. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I need to keep remembering that when you say, like, oh, it's, you know, 75, but it was kind of chilly. I'm like, holy shit, I must be dying. But <laughs> totally, totally different, like, uh, way of reading it. Right. It's uh, when I, you know, I've talked to a bunch of people on here from the UK and, and other people countries and so that use the metric system so when yeah. they say uh you know talk about temperatures i have to think of that too they'll be like yeah it was so hot out it was like 30 degrees i'm like oh <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah it's just every everyone but you weird americans using this, <laughs> this weird system that no one else can understand but you, yeah. you insist we use it as well oh it's crazy right <laughs> i think honestly i don't know the history of it but i i'm guessing uh i'm guessing that and I'm sure somebody knows the actual history of why we created the standard system and, you know, American standard system. I'm guessing it was our founding fathers, you know, of course they were from England, mm -hmm. uh, were so pissed off at the, you know, where they came from. And of course, going through the war that they're like, fuck these motherfuckers. We're not, they're not going to impose their, you know, even down to the units of measurement, we're going to change everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess it's yeah. also why you get like, you know, you get, you know, you get British English, and then you get American English, and it's just the exact same. Just you guys are lazy and took some of the letters away. <laughs> it's just this level of pettiness you got from the founding fathers, I suppose. Oh, it's classic American uh, laziness, right? It's just, yeah. Uh, uh, it's funny, man. Yeah, to see, I I love seeing the uh, different, I, I guess the differences in uh, cultures yeah. and stuff. And uh, I really enjoy it. So uh, it's so similar, think, but completely different yeah. at the same time. Right. Well, humans are the same, right? We have yeah. the, a lot of the same basic needs and wants. So I, that's our biggest connection is, is yeah. that kind of thing. And then uh, I'll, most of the man-made rules, uh, yeah, teachings, the man -made belief systems, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Those, that's where we kind of diff, you know, differ in some ways uh to a point where we hate each other you know which is dumb but you know religious stuff and you know different 
things that we try to find conflict for, I guess, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I've really enjoyed uh, f learning about different cultures since I was in the military and I went to Okinawa, Japan in 1990. And, uh, and ever since then, I've been really fascinated with learning, you know, about different cultures and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what made you guys come to America? Uh, we, my, my mom, I think my mom's always liked America. We first went when I was like seven or something, went to Florida. And obviously you, you do, you go to Florida, you do the whole Disney trip, you do the whole Universal trip. Right. You do all the touristy stuff. And I think we all just sort of got hooked on it. Cause like every single year, or every second year or so we're going back and doing the same stuff and absolutely loving it. Uh, I've not been to Florida in many years now. I think the last time I've been, it's probably like 14 or so. It's a good seven years or something ago. Seven yeah. or eight years. Uh, the most recent trip was uh, doing the West Coast, just down like, went to LA, went to Palm Springs, went to San Francisco. Uh, I, think it, I think it was the same trip. I think it also went to uh, New York for a couple of days. Uh, that was like totally different, but uh, yeah, I just drove drove down down the states and it was really That's a interesting. Long drive. Yeah, yeah, I just did it, did it across like a, I think it was a week Francisco? or so. I remember. Okay. Uh, just staying a few nights here, a few nights there. Right. It was really awesome. That is cool, man. I had a similar trip in Canada when I was a kid. I can't even remember what. Like I was way too young to appreciate this trip. So, so yeah. I was used. To, that was. But every year we've like been going to Disney. I used to that like, you know, the, the theme parks and the frills. And then they were like, "All right, we're going to Canada." I'm like, "Oh, cool! I wonder what's there." And that was all just like sightseeing, really. Yeah. So as a kid, I was like, "This is really, this is terrible." But like looking back, I'm like, "That was one of the most amazing trips," and I did not appreciate it at all. Oh, you were yeah, but you were younger, so yeah, it's it was, hard to yeah. Yeah, it must have been like ten or so, and just. Right. Did not appreciate it. And I was like, I wish I could go now and be like, do the exact same trip because be like, wow, this is incredible. We get to see the you know, uh, what's it called the, the giant waterfall, the one that split between America. And, oh, uh, and, uh, Niagara, uh, Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. See that. See the like CN Tower. All that. All the touristy stuff that, you know, it's it's just, it's just great to see. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we went to uh, Niagara Falls when I was a kid on the American side. And I vaguely, vaguely remember it. Um, we, I don't even know if we have any pictures, uh, like in our family photo album. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was cool. But I, I mean, I was so young. I really didn't, mm -hmm. didn't appreciate it. Now I will say this, uh, when I went to my wife and I, when, uh, we, we got married when I still had a couple years left in the military, I was stationed out in California she was still living in Ohio where we grew up around Cleveland. Uh, she was going to college out there. Well, we got married. I took her out to uh, Cali. So one of the weekends we took a trip to um, the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. uh, so we drove there and I got to say, uh, you know, this is 1993, I think, um, maybe late 92. We go there and we get out of the car and we start walking towards the edge where you can, you know, there's some trails and stuff, whatever, but you can walk up to the edge. They got like a, you know, kind of a railing. <clears throat> and, um, I remember looking out over this thing and when I, it was literally breathtaking, like it was uh, like a wow moment, you know, uh, really impressive because up until then we had, uh, there was no digital type of stuff to see. Yeah. yeah so, you really had to go there to see stuff. Right. Like you saw it in encyclopedia. Like the only time I would see a picture of it, maybe like a TV show or the news or something, but we never had, you know, my parents didn't have uh, good TVs anyway. So mm -hmm. um, for back then even, and um, so it was really hard to capture some kind of, uh, or, you know, feel like, Oh, this is really this big, you know? Uh, yeah. You don't vast. Sorry, grasp the size of it. Uh, -uh. I could not believe it, dude. And even to this day, it was one of those moments where it was just really was surprising, you know? So it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Vegas, I want to see Vegas. Like it sounds insane. And I don't, I don't know if it's, it's, 
I feel a feeling it's going to be exactly like LA, where I've got this like image of a golden city in my mind, and then I get there and it's all homeless people dressed as Spider Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a real eye opener. I, I thought people were taking, I thought people were exaggerating when they said LA is a bit of a shithole, but uh, oh, it's rough. <laughs> it's gone downhill so much since I was there. It was uh, yeah. we went to, I took my wife to uh, LA, you know, downtown uh, Hollywood. We went to Hollywood Boulevard. Or in, in, you know, L.A. Hollywood Boulevard, mm -hmm. where Sunset Drive and um, yeah. you know that meets and everything. So we went in Rodeo Drive. Uh, they call it Rodeo Drive. It's, is that it's the, spelled is that like the white one with all like the shops in there on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, we went there and it's you know it's it's a weird. It's like not ten minutes away from like the slummiest People places on, in the, in the and like the shittest areas ever <laughs> but it's like the most expensive shops on earth it's like what what's happened here it's so it's weird, weird like, yeah <laughs> there's a lot of uh there's a lot of actors and stuff that you know used to live out in that area that have mm -hmm. since moved like to arizona to texas whatever you know to cut to get away from that because it's so like if you don't yeah. live in the heart of like beverly hills or whatever where it's really yeah you're in you the know, stacks you're in the slums end. basically yeah you are in the slums uh and it's it's spreading big time like i remember uh years ago not even that long ago just a few years ago one of my buddies was like have you seen uh we were stationed together out there and he was like have you seen um skid row like what happened out there and i was like skid row where we never called it that because it wasn't that mm -hmm. bad Hollywood Boulevard had, uh, when I took my wife there in 92, it had, um, there was like one or two homeless people sleeping in the shop uh, doorways, you know, at night when they closed. But uh, the street was, you know, it wasn't clean, like in the movies, you know, they clean it up for the movies, but yeah. it was, uh, you know, it wasn't real shitty looking. It wasn't trash everywhere or whatever. So he's like, yeah, dude, uh, since we left there, uh, there's this actual skid row now. Like, I'm like, what? So I'm looking at this thing like, holy shit, dude, what happened? Like tent city along, mm -hmm. you know, these roads and, and just people shitting in the street. It's wild. Yeah, it's just, and it's, it's sad that it's a reality and there's nothing yeah. being done about it. It just uh, keeps getting worse and worse. Like mm -hmm. the, uh, in Glasgow, there's a, a lot of homeless people just along the streets and it gets worse and worse each time I go into the city and I'm like, there's nothing being done about this. Yeah. Like, there's all these, all the shops in the high street. I don't know what it's like in uh, America, but like, all the sh like shops, you know, you'd walk down the high street, you'd usually have all the shops. They're all shut. Every single place that wasn't like, you know, a giant business. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, is shut. And even some of like, the massive, st like department stores, they're gone. There's a massive shop mm. uh, right on the corner of Sucky Hill Street, right in the, head, like, the center of Glasgow. It's one of the most iconic shops in Glasgow. Gone, and it's been gone for years. Wow. And the pretty sure just homeless people were sleeping in it for like a good year or two before they closed it all up. But like, you know, boarded up the windows. So I wonder if it's that's insane. a. I wonder if that's a result of, or maybe a combination of things. Maybe like uh, online shopping, mm -hmm. right? People less people going to the stores uh, as much. Can't even remember if it was before or after COVID. Uh, Right. Let's see. Well, that we... one definitely took a, you know, or made a big Yeah, yeah that, that was the nail in the coffin for the high street, uh -huh. really. It's, for sure. It's not going to be long before we're all just ordering stuff off drones from Amazon. Well, <laughs> have uh, you seen, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a handful of movies over the years that were really, really, like, uh, you know, predictions of what's happening, um, you know, and what's going to happen. You know, have you seen that kids movie, WALL-E? Oh, yeah, of course. The robot, robot, yeah. It's an insane With all the trash and the, it's like the the drones are just on schedule. Oh, there's another one too. Yeah. Uh, the drones are just on schedule, dropping packages off to people's places, and they just keep piling up and piling up. You know, it's like that uh, Amazon subscribe and save thing. You know, it's like yeah, <laughs> people well, die or something happens, and it just keeps coming to your house. Yeah, there's a thing like. Uh seen the other day and it was like a company's making essentially like the little like mobility vehicles 
for everybody and mm-hmm. they've got like a section for people that are overweight and just somebody had commented under just a picture from wally and i'm like every day we're just getting closer and closer to it for sure so I just googled it uh it's british home stores that was it not i think i said b&m or something okay uh, british home stores closed in 2015 so it's so before covid it's way before covid so yeah. it's been empty all this time wow nothing's happened with it it is right in the heart of the city it's yeah it's lots of foot traffic passes it it's empty no one can afford the rent and it's yeah just, i was gonna say it's uh it's, you know those the, that kind of land or you know buildings like that you we always mm-hmm. wonder why don't they just uh why don't why don't they rip it down like why don't they do something with this land you know but it, oh yeah obviously it costs money somebody's got to pay for you know yeah there was a a massive fire ripped through Glasgow years ago. It must have been around the okay. same time, twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen, maybe. Mm. Can't exactly remember, but like it, it destroyed uh, this great. It's a great uh, music venue. It was uh, the O2 Academy, I think it was ABC or something. Yeah. Uh, it's still standing there, but the building's in such disrepair that you know they can't. You, they can't use it. They need to demolish it, but it's going to cost too much to demolish it, so it's just lying there. Hmm. Like, come on, it's it's awful right now. It's weird. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's not good to see when uh, that was it one looks of the things. Te- yeah, it looks terrible. When we um, and it's kind of depressing when you're if you live around there if you have to drive through that area, you know that kind of area all the time. It uh, it makes you feel this like, man, this place is going down, right? Uh. I remember when, before we moved here, we, we're in South Carolina right now. We've been here like 15 years. So up in, around Cleveland, where we were at, they, uh, you know, growing up there, it was kind of a, Akron and Cleveland were kind of a booming city. And then they started going down, like in the 80s, late 80s, um, mid 90s and stuff. They started, you know, a lot of factories started moving to other states, to other countries. And, uh you know, a lot of that has to do with leadership, right? The uh, tax laws and things, you know, um, that aren't, they, they'll, they'll penalize companies for certain things or they charge them too much tax, whatever it is. And so they leave. And, uh, and so it's, um, you know, it started going downhill back then. And when we came down here, when we left there, it was falling apart. A lot of places were falling apart in the Akron and Cleveland area. And it's real depressing having to drive through that. You're like, it just feels like, bro, what? <laughs> there, it's not progress, right? Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> declining. So it's, it's uh, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah for sure. But it's we like got down here, with, and there's uh, a lot of places that are building up, so it's good. It's like that a lot of like a lot of uh, areas around Glasgow. Like the, I live in Cumbernauld, just outside of Glasgow, so it's like a sizable town, and. Uh, it was built basically as an outlet because there was too many people in Glasgow. Mm. So they're like, all right, we'll build a bunch of towns quite quickly and get people away from Glasgow because it's going to become, you know, overpopulated. Yeah. So they built all these, you know, giant tower, like flat, like, uh, you know, like, I don't know what you'd call them in America, like apartment blocks, flats, yeah. we'd call them. Uh, you're just these big towers, they build them everywhere. They build all these, like, council flats. They build just a lot of, a lot of houses in one area and build it quickly. So now the whole area is just these ugly gray buildings everywhere. Uh, I'm going to send you an image of what common all is most known for. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, we get bullied online for this. Uh, our glorious, glorious uh, town center. This is right in the center of our town. I'm not even making this up. This is where the hub of my town is. All right. Everything happens here in this glorious uh, 60s, 70s architecture. Yeah. You try and figure out what that is, I can't. (laughs) I'm going to share the screen for you so everybody can see what we're looking at here. This is the center of my town. Backbone of industry. All the shops are here. I don't know what I'm looking at, honestly, and I live here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 
That's wild. It's yeah. So they just built a ton of stuff really fast. So there's all these like all these streets are exactly the same looking, and they're all just this ugly mess of gray. I mean, who designed this architecture, bro? It looks crazy. It, I don't know what they were thinking. They were on crack or something. Like <laughs> it looks so desolate. It looks like something from like a what like is a, like this? A par- it looks like a parody of like you know like the Russian like Cold War era structures yeah. where it's just depressing. But it looks like some of, uh, one of the video games I played years ago, like steampunk style kind of thing. That's yeah. uh, just like these structures are not. It's just nothing it looks lines like an up. AI has generated it, like, and it doesn't know how to make sense of it. It's yeah. insane. And just surrounding, this is the the center of Cumberland. Everywhere around it is just grey concrete, and like they're slowly tearing down all the like the blocks of flats. Yeah. But, you know, it's they're just replacing with more flats, just looking a bit better. So it's like, what's the point? That's crazy, dude. I'm in all this strange little place, but that's the other thing. Like, you st- in America, you don't really have roundabouts. See if you came to Cumberland, you would not be able to drive here because every five minutes there's just roundabouts <laughs> for no reason. Like, this could easily be a right turn. No, we're gonna put a roundabout here. <laughs> Why not? I know, right? Well, I will say this. Uh, now, I don't know about other states, but here in South Carolina, they have gone to the roundabouts. Uh, in the last like two to three years, they start mm-hmm. adding them at four way stops. So there'd be intersection, and instead yeah. of it, it's not really that busy. So they'll, instead of having a stoplight, they'll have four stop signs, which are a fucking pain in the ass because people come up there, they don't know who goes first. So everyone just sits there. <laughs> and then somebody starts honking, like, oh, and then, and then two people start going, and it's like, uh, oh, no, you go. And oh, no, yeah. you go. And then, like, bro, can somebody just fucking go? So they put roundabouts in. And then we still, the problem is people, especially old people are not used to them. So they don't know how they work. So they treat them like stop signs. So then they sit there for fucking ever. I'm like, what, bro, you're supposed to go into traffic. Okay. Like, like merge. How does it work? How does it work in America? We, you know, we come up to the, the roundabout. We look right. If there's no one coming, you just go. Yeah. You know, you give way to the right. I guess it's give way to the left. because you're on Right. The right. We, yeah, exactly. Right. It's, yep. Or correct, I should say. <laughs> right, left. Uh, so we drive on the right side of the road. and uh, The wrong side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're the right the, side. The Y'all are the wrong side. side. Of the, the founding fathers again. <laughs> this keeps coming back. Opposites, bro. They did everything opposite, apparently. They just um, refused. When I, uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was probably... Uh, head trauma from battle okay from from the war <laughs> so <what it> was, <laughs> they're like yeah. shit we can't remember the the metric system how we measure shit let's uh let's start a new one okay um but when they i went to japan to they uh they drove on the right on the uh, left side of the road uh, or at least they did i don't know if they still do and uh and it was it was very difficult to get used to when we went <laughs> when we were stationed there you know yeah, so uh, you you forget, especially when you're making uh, left turns, mm-hmm. or was it right turns? Well, either one, honestly. It was like you just this habit from all these years driving in America, and then you turn and you're like, oh shit, I'm in the wrong lane. Oh no, I'm not. Okay, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I remember my dad like driving in America. He seemed to pick up pick up like quite quickly, but you know, obviously he was. A bit unsure of like, right, what way am I going here? What, yeah, how does this work? But the other thing about American roads is like, it's mostly just straight lines, yeah. You know, like everywhere you go, it's just straight. And then we've got like these, like, really old roads from obviously, like, you know, like horse and cart days, you know, it's got winding bends, these country roads, and that. But you go to America, it's just straight roads forever, oh, yeah. and then like yeah. eventually it goes, okay, you can turn right now move somewhere but (laughs) until then it's just a straight road until you reach your right turn correct it is uh there a lot of them like that now the only ones that are kind of still windy like what you're talking about is either Mm -hmm. going up a mountain or going through a mountainous area or it's natural terrain right 
or the um, <clears throat> the country roads that we still have out here, which I'm sure a lot of places have in Texas and Florida and stuff. We you know we have back roads or country roads yeah. in South Carolina that don't they don't, you know there's not a whole lot out there. They don't get a lot of traffic, and uh, and they're very windy through like woods and stuff. But um, that's about it. Everything else is straight. Yeah, it's the same. Like, I just imagine people, like, uh, blaring down the straight roads doing, like, 90 or 100 miles per hour mm. with no necessity to stop. <laughs> like, they're just like, I can go straight as I want. Like, Yeah. For hours and hours, bro. It's insane. Yeah. I Meanwhile, well, here, you can't go five minutes for a bloody roundabout. <laughs> That's funny. Now, what, uh, so growing up there, mm -hmm. um, how was, uh, how was high school for you? Like, do you guys have, um, are the schooling systems set up where you, you obviously learn the basics? Um, you know, I'm sure that, but as far as yeah. languages, do you guys learn, um, do you have to learn a, a second language? Up until, I think it's fourth year, third or fourth year, you, you do, I know you do a bit of French, you do French, Spanish, and German in your first like three years. Then in the fourth year, I think it was, you have to pick one. Uh, and in fifth and sixth, they're like, all right, we'll stop fucking you around. You can do what you want now. Pick, the, pick whatever classes you actually want to do. You don't have to do any languages. So I did, uh, I think I did a bit of German, but like I didn't. I didn't really want to learn it, so I didn't really care about the class. Yeah. I still sort of did it. I don't really know any German. Uh, listen, I've got Rammstein, so like, I know about a, a bit of German through that. <laughs> That's learned more through that than I did in actually German. But yeah, we just start forced for a bit and you don't really care. Right. Yeah, see, that's how it is here. Yeah. We're not really... Uh, so we... And well, when I was in, when I was in school, that was a long time ago, but we weren't, uh, it wasn't required to learn a language, you know, a second language. It was, mm -hmm. uh, an elective. So we could just choose, you know, that class. And a lot of people did choose a second language class in high school <clears throat> just because we knew it was going to be easy, like an easy grade, you know, Yeah. because you didn't really have to, like, they weren't strict about it. You didn't have to learn a whole lot. Uh, and so it was pretty laid back. And, uh, so I took Spanish and I learned a couple words, you know, Ola, and I learned how to say hi and beer. We, me and my buddies thought it was cool <laughs> to learn cerveza. <laughs> oh yeah. All I remember was, uh, piety, which means shut up because our teacher would just tell us to shut up, but she'd do it in Spanish. <laughs> I remember that. That was all, that was quite often said. No, I'm uh, sure. In my, uh, like, primary school, I think America you'd call it like, a grade school, you know, like, when you're, like, mm -hmm. five, four, like, up mm -hmm. to, like, like, ten or whatever, before you go into, like, actual high school, uh, my primary school did Gaelic, which is, like, a traditional Scottish language. Right. It's not, it's not very, like, it's not spoken, it's not like somebody would, you know, oh, this is, like, a Gaelic-speaking pub, you know, we only speak Gaelic here. It's on like road signs and that every now and then, but gotcha. no one really speaks it. It's mm -hmm. more kept up for tradition and um, you know, like keeping the language alive so it doesn't become like you know, like Latin, but it's you can learn it, but it's a dead language, no one really speaks it. Right. So, like, I picked up a little bit of Gaelic in primary school, and like, literally, all I can remember is uh, Matin Va, which is good morning, and Fiskerma, which is good afternoon. Because mm. that's what they'd make you say at all the like assemblies. You know, the the head teacher would come out and you'd go, uh, "Good morning, Mrs. Price," and then you'd go, "Martin, va, Mrs." And you'd want to kill yourself the entire time. <laughs> and what's funny is she even brought up how depressed we sounded doing it. So she like had an assembly to correct us on how to say good morning. It's like. After that, it was like a really sarcastic "Good morning, Mrs. Price" from like every child in the school, <laughs> followed by "Martin Va, Mrs. Price," and you like it, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it, that's it might funny. Have been, I might have been like seven, but we still like realized how much of a piss ache that was. But right, Gaelic's a really interesting language. It's I know a few people that like 
you know, those like there was English speaking kids at the school, and then there was like ones that took a dedicated like Gaelic class. Oh. Uh, despite it not being like a spoken language, I don't know where any of them are now. I don't yeah. know if they're still speaking Gaelic, but it's sort of like if you took Gaelic in the primary, you usually continue it in high school. Uh, it's really interesting, though. I don't, I don't know why they don't just let it die, but I'm glad it's still being like taught at least. It's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, part of the history of you know Scotland and everything. So <laughs> it's uh, my wife. Um, her mom is Irish descent, <laughs> and then her dad Scottish descent. So his parents, uh, well, his dad was from Scotland. So, um, so she's got it both. So she had, uh, in fact, when she was growing up, her grandfather would, uh, had her when she was like nine and 10 years old, she mm -hmm. was in the Scottish games. So they would have, uh, you know, these, uh, it's like a festival basically once a year. Yeah, oh yeah. The Highland games. Like it, it clicked yeah. in my head the first thing. I was like, Highland games. And I was like, oh yeah. Highland games. You know, like the, <laughs> yeah. the caber toss stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And she yeah. was one of the Scottish dancers. So yeah. they would go and they, they, a lot of people would speak Gaelic, uh, to announce some of these game, you know, mm -hmm. events that were starting or some shit like that. She was, you know, cause I, I was close with her grandfather and, uh, and he would, he was really proud of it, you know, and, and talk about it. He had a ring that was, uh, something was Gaelic, you know, it was imprinted, uh, Gaelic yeah. writing on it. Um, a Cladall ring, I think it's called. God, don't ask me. I don't Cladall? know. I don't, yeah, I, I can't remember my own what culture. he called it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, no yeah man. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's cool, man. I, you know, the first lesson I got in, I guess, uh, Scottish culture was. The movie Braveheart. Of course, that is that's where everyone goes to see movie. <laughs> well, recently Brave has been a big a big talking point, but yeah, uh, yeah, Braveheart. Uh, what's funny is there's like there's also like statues, uh, like William Wallace and uh, Robert the Bruce, and people like go to see them and like yo, that's the guy from Braveheart, and you're like, oh no, this was a real man. This he really did actually do that, <laughs> right? So, like. I love the movie Braveheart more for its historical inaccuracy. Uh, like the the Battle of Stirling Bridge in the movie, there's there's no bridge and it was filmed in Ireland. Uh, I don't know why they did that, but yeah. uh, there's a lot of them and it's really interesting to look up. But this the Stirling Bridge one gets me every time because there's there's no bridge. Why did you do that? What are oh, you that's thinking? Wild. Yeah. If you have like if you have like ten minutes, I recommend reading up on it because it's there's a lot of weird like choices they made with that film, and it's like it's not historically accurate very much. Yeah, uh, it's just that like you remind me, you're not like a memory in my head. There, saying like your uh, your wife's grandfather was Scottish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When we went to when we went to Florida, like, and every time we'd mention we're Scottish, you'd get you know like. Americans were like, oh, I love Scotland. I, I love Scotland. All my, I got family in Scotland, you know. And you're just like, and the first time it was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Second time it was like, oh, that's awesome. And then the third time we're like, Sh damn, there's a sure a lot of Scottish ancestors here, isn't there? <laughs> Can't tell if they're just taking the piss or if there really is just a lot of Scottish descended Americans in Florida right. for some reason, which makes no sense because you would assume they would all make for like Alaska. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's right? the coldest place ever. But I remember there was like it, down like the like you know it's like the side attractions are like universal, and there was a guy who gave us like two free shots just because we were Scottish. <laughs> Americans love Scottish people for some weird reason. I don't get it because if you've seen the average like Scottish, uh, what's the politest way to put this? Denizen, uh. They're pretty rough looking. It's what is it now? What's denizen? I'm trying to think. Uh, like uh, all my other Scottish listeners are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Just 
the roughest average, like the most av like your average, like uh, your everyday person. Yeah, just looks rough as fuck. You know, it's not all. <laughs> it's not all Merida from Brave. It's it's mostly Neds, uh, non-educated delinquents. Gotcha. Neds, uh, you know the pop out in the trackies. You know they got the. Uh, I don't know how better to describe it. It's like a, Scottish people are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. No one else is going to understand. <laughs> but just like the it sounds, it sounds awful, but like you know the yeah the 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 common people, you know. Yeah, God, I sound like you know my holiest of holies, but like you know I'm <laughs> sounding like some like Victorian. Like upper class. Oh yes, the peasants down there. No, the peasants. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's just your. If you walk down the street, that's the most common person you're gonna see. You're gonna see like, just the most like, junky looking, type people. <laughs> Great. Well, I mean, compared to uh, the Skid Row in L.A. I'm yeah, sure it's uh, like that with less not... drugs. I'd say. <laughs> there's still there's still a lot of drug use, just mostly weed. I'd say. I think we sort of got past heroin in the nineties. Yeah, right. Boy, that's a nasty one. That, and you know, it's uh, huge, of course. Now is the uh, pills. There's so mm. many people on uh, like pain meds and shit. Yeah, that's that. Here we go. This is this is that is coming out. The uh, <laughs> it's the sort of thing I hate with like modern doctors. They'd rather, you know, they they they'd cure it, but they're not solving it. They're like, no. all right, I've. I've got all this back pain. I'm really stressed. I'm like, all right, just take these pills. You'll be fine. Yeah. And, you know, people are then just reliant on it. If I ever, you know, was to go to a doctor and say, like, I have these issues and they recommend you pills, I would refuse because that's not, you know, I want to be in control of my own body. I don't want to just numb the pain. Right. Because it's not going to help. It's, it's just no, like it's putting a plaster over it. Yeah. You're, yeah. Doing a, you're putting a band aid on something that, uh, -huh. uh, needs, you know, <laughs> more the, than a band-aid. That's the problem though, because if, if they did properly look at people's problems, you know, the NHS would be even more overflowed than it is. It's, yeah. it's a mess than now. The, the NHS is ridiculously like underfunded, overworked and overcrowded. And mm. like the people working there, I've got the utmost respect for, but the people that run it, you know, this, it's a shambles. The, it is. So much of it is just a mess. Yeah, my wife actually works in a uh, a doctor's office. So like a <laughs> family practice, you know, family doctor, yeah. um, you know, small office. And uh, and it the, some of the stuff, it, it is, the, the even those, that kind of doctor office or those kind of doctors, <clears throat> they are, uh, you know, a lot of that has changed over the last 15 years or so where they're they're oh this is your symptom here you go here's a pill uh mm -hmm. no matter what it is and there's no they're not even allowed to uh prescribe like a uh, holistic kind of approach right mm -hmm. like uh uh hey up your vitamin c you know this kind of thing no it's take this pharmaceutical drug that's really it's a different name but it's really just vitamin c and something else or whatever yeah but it costs, you know, a thousand times more. So they're oh, not yeah, even just, I forgot crazy, for that bro. culture as well. You just actually have to pay for your medicine. Like, uh, yeah. Also, all your medicals, like private in Scotland, all our prescriptions are for free. They're done for the yeah. NHS. So if, if I do need something prescribed to me, I speak to my doctor, they give me a little letter. I go to the Jeep, the, like the pharmacist. I just get it. Yeah. I don't have to pay, like, you know, I don't have to. If I have to mortgage my house to survive, it's that's insane. Yeah, you know, I I was so torn about it about that for so many years. Um, you know that whole issue that well, you guys obviously don't. You know, it's not like an issue over there. You don't talk mm -hmm. about it, but here it's been talked about for a long time. Uh, you know, a lot of year like the last probably five ten years about you know that issue about the uh, socialized medicine. You know. And, uh, and then of course there's always the, you know, both sides say the pros and cons and, uh, 
I don't know, man. I mean, I know what socialized medicine feels like because in, in the military, you know, I spent four years in the military active duty and it's, and it's the same thing. You know, you go to the hospital, everything's free. It doesn't come out of your pay or nothing, or, you know, you don't pay for it right then. Mm. I mean, our taxes do, but it's, uh, and, but I can say that <laughs> the care, uh, as far as the service was shit. Um, you, there's, you couldn't set an appointment. I don't know how it is over there for you guys, like going to the doctor, but for the military, you couldn't set an appointment. <clears throat> if you had to go to the doctor for something, uh, outside of emergency where you had to be rushed in, it was, uh, you go there, you sign in and you wait and you might wait for, depending on how many people they have oh. working, you might wait for six hours just to go see for. You know, for like a, you know, if you had a chest cold or a sinus infection or some shit, uh, yeah, that, that kind of sucks, but <laughs> you know, to say that it's like sort of similar here now, like, uh, to speak to like your local doctor, like you, you know, like a doctor's office, like you said, you be like the system right now. And it's, I don't know why they made it this worse system. Basically got a phone them at open. So they open at like, I think it's like eight or nine in the morning. Right. You've got a phone, 8 a.m. on the dot, to try and get an appointment. If you get through, you get an appointment. If you don't, you're they're like, if you phone like a minute late, they're like, all right, they're all gone. All their appointments are booked. Which makes no sense. Why wouldn't I just have a wait list? I'd rather wait, you know, two weeks on a wait list. Right. Than like beg every morning, please, can I get an appointment? They won't schedule it's for the next morning. No, uh, you have That's to just so weird. You, know, you have to basically fight them for it, which is why yeah. there's so many people like just they go to like accident emergency and just go yeah. with for that. So that's getting backlogged, you know, a lot. The people are going now with like minor issues, mm -hmm. not actual emergencies. It's just because you can't see a doctor. It's insane. You know, they have uh, there's there's a lot of that here as well. Where <clears throat> even with private medicine, they go. Uh, sometimes people would get charged less through their insurance to go to the emergency room than mm -hmm. to go to a doctor, like an appointment, which makes no sense to me. I don't know how that works, but, uh, so people will, instead of going to the doctor, they'll start just going to the emergency room and sitting there and waiting. Uh, so in that, in that case, they can't make an appointment. Obviously they just have to go and wait. Yeah. You and so, that, yeah. And, uh, and then. It is, it, it, that whole system is really kind of screwed up. Like, um, I mean, it needs some work. It needs some work. It works, uh, for, you know, for emergencies, like real emergencies, if, you know, when you, yeah, like you break your leg, hospital, you know, you rights. rush to the emergency room. Yeah. But someday like, you know, with a really like bad chest infection. Yeah. You know, you need to be seen to, but the best room is for someone else. This is for, yep. you know. You've been in a nasty car crash. You've you're coughing up blood. Exactly. You know stuff like that. It's if you were dying right there and there, you need the emergency room. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's I like this wild. is a. I like that we came here to talk about air software, discussing the world's health <laughs> climate. <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> it's always your, how it goes. Uh, the the architecture screw ups in in Scotland and uh yeah and the uh, and the healthcare mm -hmm. system. <laughs> Yeah, but like uh, it's funny. for an American culture, like the whole like prescribing these like you know these big pharma, yeah, as they, as they say like drugs to people. Yeah. I don't think you're ever gonna get rid of that because there's such an ingrained business, like uh, yeah. underlying issue in America. Like you know, you always hear like you know senators, politicians, that being paid off by these big companies to right. keep this legislation in place keep making sure they can make their money there's so much money being made in america through all this it's not going to change yeah i agree it's it's an entire like you you to fix the issue you'd need to rip out america and put it back together yeah which is never it's i know they say like it's never going to be possible it's never going to be possible it's too it's too big to stop I think so. I don't think, uh, mm -hmm. man, I don't, you know, it's really difficult to say where it's going to go, but the way it looks mm -hmm. now, it looks like it's going to end up like, you know, that movie, uh, Elysium. Uh, I know one with, of us um, seen it now. 
It has that one actor that played in uh Another one with ninth, Tom Cruise? The ninth district. No, it was um Matt Damon, I think. Elysium. Wasn't it Matt Damon? Yeah, Elysium. <laughs> or Elysium. Matt Damon and Jodie Foster, yeah. Yeah, Jodie Foster was like... It came out at that of... time, like, there was a ton of films just incredibly similar to it, and you're just like... Yes. These are all the same film, just with different names, but... Chappie, uh, uh, you know, how it showed the... Edge of Tomorrow. Degradation yeah. of South Africa, and, yeah. Um, robots, you know, robot police. Yeah, this, like... That, not this, like, sci-fi, distant future sort of tale to talk... Totalarian yep. is the word or something? Yes. Uh huh. It's right. Where you have this huge this gap between. Corporates. Uh, yep. Rich and then the, uh, what'd you call them? The Neds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the lower class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's going to be, you know? I, I feel like it's going that way yeah, yeah, pretty quickly, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so growing up the way you did, where, what yeah. uh, got you into shooting or uh were you into shooting before uh, that or did you uh do you guys have guns over there like are you allowed to have guns so, real fire gun, well, firearms so on like a surface level most people know they they're not allowed to have guns you okay you can but it's like it's not like america where you just you know you walk into your local walmart or for us asda uh yeah. <laughs> just you know you just i'll just take an m a box of five by six you know right it's not like that if there's like shooting clubs, there's like, you know, private ownership for okay. like sporting purposes and also like, you know, farmers and that can buy like guns. Uh it's mainly shotguns for like, you know, defending the livestock or sure. sporting purposes. Uh to do that you need like a shotgun license, you need uh, like a firearms license, you need all that. Mm. Uh, which is apparently easier to do than you think, but it's you know, it's it's more it, it's mostly for specific people, specific purposes. Not everyone is just going to go. I want a shotgun. You know, I was going to go for the offer of getting a license. No, it's it's so not get like denied, that. Basically, but, like if you tried to, it's apparently just... much easier than you think. Like you can oh, just okay. get a shotgun license as long as you get no. I think it's like no criminal record, and you've no, right. you know, like you know, like. Uh, like a diagnosis for like psycho psychotic behavior or right, like suicidal right. thoughts, tendencies, suicidal. Yep. stuff like that. Uh, basically, as long as you come up all green on their card, you can just get one. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know how it, I don't actually know the process, but I know I've got a shout out to my friend Alan Roy. I doubt you'll listen to this, but uh, he's he's big into his gun ownership and you know, he's, he's a massive collector. Like, I've seen pet if he's. I've seen pictures of his house, it's insane. Like he's a massive collector of everything sci fi, historical and firearm related. He's I think he'd fit in well in America, but that's <laughs> another story. But uh yeah. Uh myself, I was I grew up a Call of Duty kid. I was playing COD four when nice. it came out and in every single COD since, except uh except Ghosts and Advanced Warfare, so I quit around that time. Picked up again at Black Ops Three, and that's when I like really got into it. Yeah. Uh, so I've always been into like you know shooters and guns and that. Uh, Did you play the story but, mode on a uh, Call of Duty? 4? I'd, yeah, I'd play all the like campaign and that. Uh, Do you, was that the first game that you ever played that had the uh, where your character died? Remember that scene where you're like in Call of Duty Four, the original mm -hmm. Modern Warfare? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, I'm like, so there's. I, the, I know the campaign very well. I'm like trying to remember it though. Right, so it's when you're in a helicopter and then like uh, it crashes oh, and you, you're the crawling nuke, out. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, the nuke, and you're crawling out, and you're like, you know, because most games before that, like once you start the game, like your character yeah, always character. survives. He might go through some shit, but you know, yeah, you, you keep that same character. So he's crawling out, and I remember this like. Uh -huh. Holy shit! As a what kid, it's quite horrifying because you know, <laughs> and typically you know, games are like you know, action movies. You know, big explosions right. are they're really cool. Guns are cool. Explosions yeah. are cool. Everyone's everyone's cool. And then you've got this really horrifying like nuclear scene. You see like people like you know clutching their face together. Mm -hmm. you know, everyone's destroyed. Everyone's burnt out. And you're like, 
God, this isn't fun anymore. I want to go home. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when I played Marvel Fair 2 as a kid, uh, the no Russian mission, I didn't realize, I had no idea, you know, like, you know, like any like mass shootings where I'd never been exposed to that. So I never realized how messed up that mission was. I was just like, oh, cool. This is a, a target rich environment to shoot in. Yeah, you're talking about the until, uh, airport where you walk yeah, the, the airport. No Russian. Yeah, dude. And then, like, you, I was replaying it as, like, a teenager years later, and I was like, oh, I really like this mission. And then I was like, holy shit, what am, why? <laughs> I'm a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> What's <laughs> wrong with me? Why did I enjoy this? Well, it was the same thing. with uh, When that game came out, <clears throat> they had uh, they have an option to yeah, you get the skip option to that skip mission. It. And I didn't yeah. understand. Yeah, I couldn't understand, like, why? Why don't you want to skip this? This is the most fun mission. Like, dude, uh, of course we're not going to skip it. Like, you say, hey, this is like taboo. This is like, oh, well, you know, a lot of, in the, the, oh, the yeah. way it comes up to skip it, you know, it gives that whole description of this might be really offensive, blah, blah, blah. We're like, fuck yeah, give me that. You know, like, what? I just, what think, it was, I just think it was really cool when I was a kid because I had the veteran achievement for that mission. But it's only because you start the mission on veteran. And then you skip it, and it gives you the achievement. I thought oh, it was shit. really cool, because on the, my Xbox, I was like, oh, look at me, I completed a mission on Veteran. <laughs> no, you didn't, you skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was, you know, there's a balance, too, with uh, with games like that, or missions like that. There was this game, mm -hmm. uh, years ago, it came out, it was called Manhunt. Yes. And it was fucking brutal, bro. Yeah, I couldn't, was... I couldn't play the game for more than, like, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, because yeah, it, it was so... It's, it's like... Yeah, it's Psychotic. visceral. It was very visceral. The the sound, they, I mean, they, they got it right. You know, it seems like, uh, you know, with oh, yeah. the machete, you can have the machete and chop someone's head off. And it wasn't yeah. like normal games where it's, you know, a swipe and whatever. It was yeah, They went in detail, yeah. Oh, it was gritty, God. it was dark, it was quite gruesome, yeah. Oh, it was. I remember when I first started playing it, it was, you know, all those new, because it was new. And no no game had ever done that, mm -hmm. you know, detailed of things. And uh, and after a good 30 minutes of playing it, I was like, I don't feel good playing this game. Yeah, you man. start to feel a bit this. queasy because you're like, this is, <laughs> yeah. Video game details like that, they have their roots in this, you know, like forbidden, like, you know, you're you're never meant to be exposed to this. Like, yeah. You know, horrors beyond your comprehension. Like games that have a root in that is really interesting. Like there was a thing I read recently about Half Life Two. Uh, one of the corpse models is based off a real burn, like burnt corpse that Valve read in a medical journal. Oh shit! The the zombie models are like all twisted and mangled. Right. They're apparently based off car crash victims. Yeah, it's really like. It's That's really quite wild. disturbing. Yeah. And I love those <laughs> games. That was one of my favorite games. Uh, Half Life, yeah. Half Life Two when it came out. Like yeah. everybody knows the like the the Half Life Two. You set the zombie on fire, and it like you know you hear it screaming, but if you play it backwards, it's actually just talking. Oh, I didn't it's, know like, that. It's like begging. It's like begging. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the zombie heard. burning. It makes like the oh. Uh, the... See if you play that backwards, you can hear like a human voice in there, like begging for. It to stop or something. What? Halfway Holy through, it gets quite shit. horrifying when you look into it. Oh, yeah. dude, that's that game scared the shit out of me. And the, and you know, Half Life the original oh, yeah. one, Ravenholm, it was awful. It was, uh, you know, it was like uh, it was the first game of its kind. Yeah, it redefined shooters. It really time. did, and it was one of the first games that I remember. I don't know if it was legitimately the first game to do this, but it was one of the first games that I remember. I was a PC gamer at the time, me and my buddies, and we mm -hmm. played all kind of different, you know, Unreal Tournament and Counter the original Counter Strike, and then. Uh, quake and you know that kind of shit <clears throat> so when half-life came out and we're playing the campaign it is you know because that one didn't have a multiplayer it wasn't until later they came out with blue shift yeah. i think was the uh multiplayer so uh we're playing through the game and it is um when you get up to the top you know you're, you're start out in the bottom when you make it to the mm -hmm. top the fucking you know the of course the government sends in uh the delta squad or whatever it's called you know to to wipe you out you know clear all witnesses basically and they are uh the ai 
was actually smart. It wasn't, we weren't used to that kind of AI in a game, you know, the, the NPCs or whatever, actually working in coordination with each other, yeah. calls, call outs and stuff to each other, throwing a grenade, waiting. Like they were, and then if you died, when it reloaded, they would do different things. They weren't. Yeah, you know, they were different pro- every time. It was crazy. It's like uh, my, one of the first games I ever really played was uh, the original Deus Ex. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was very similar as well, where the AI was like, would actively react to what you did. Right. You know, you'd get spotted and they'd be like, I think he's over here. And they'd all like, search that area before returning to their patrols. They'd, you know, set off alarms, they'd set traps. You know, it's, that was very good for its time. Yeah. And there's a, a lot of kind of like, I love that game, so I know a lot of like obscure details about it, mm. um, such as how it predicted nine uh, eleven controversially. Really, the, uh, so the first level set in New York is set on, uh, you know, by the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, the skyline couldn't render the twin towers due to a memory issue, so they removed them from the skyline, and and the, like there's like some like deep lore in the game if you like read the journals and like text documents and that you find out they were destroyed in a terrorist attack the game came out in 2000 a year later oh my obviously God. yeah it's there's That's some obscure history crazy, for you bro yeah yeah this it's a really weird coincidence call it conspiracy but right. i think that was just co- coincidence and they were probably a bit horrified the year after the game came out and they're like uh, did we inspire that, or <laughs> no did we, shit, did we, right? Did we create this, or no? Nah. That's it's a really weird detail, huh? And it that's the only like I think it's the only building that's missing from the skyline. That's so, crazy. God, it's like what the hell was that? But now, are you yeah. uh, are you apt? To, do you uh do you like conspiracy theories? Do you like I'm looking into them and all that? Cer- certain ones, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm big into like if I get in like really into a game, I go like deep into it. Like obviously I was very into Deus Ex, so I know a lot of obscure things like how uh you know, like how the game renders the outside of the anything outside the play area gets culled. So there's like a lot of like NPCs that don't come into play till later, but mm. they can't just, you know, put them outside the map. So right. what they do is they put them on top of like the tallest building. Uh, so that when he's ready to be pulled in later, he can just go, okay, move him from point, you know, point A to point B. Right. What this leads to, though, is players exploiting the game now to jump on top of the building and talk to him early and skip the entire level. Uh, <laughs> it's surprisingly easy to do. It's, Holy shit. Yeah. This, these little, I love development conspiracy theories like that. Like, right. You know, the sort of, you know, the, the way they worked it out and that, but yeah, uh, it's not a conspiracy theory. That's more of my obscure trivia. But uh, do you believe in aliens? Shit, there's got to be something. That's what I'm Honestly, thinking. Like, like the chance of life on this planet was astronomically low, and look how much we've spread. So right, like there's got to be something. Maybe not in this the galaxy or yeah, galaxy. Right, there's got to be something though. Because our planet is in this, you know, this sweet spot, this perfect, if we were, like, a few thousand miles out, you know, we wouldn't, we'd be too hot. If we're a few thousand miles out, we'd be too cold. And just life wouldn't sustain itself. So I think we've just got to find those perfect conditions again. Yeah. And see if life, like, exists. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I had pizza before this. Uh, nice. I was, sitting, yeah, like, I was yeah, talking like, with. Oh, go ahead. No, like uh, honestly, like I think, I think science has literally like just created life. Like they can just generate microorganisms, microorganisms, uh, organis- organisms. <laughs> words are escaping me. Uh, you know, they create these like, you know, insignificant little like bacteria and that. Right, they're being c- created. What's to say it doesn't get more? Right. Oh, for sure. Well, I always yeah. said, uh, I, th- you know, I once I got out of the military, 
uh, I didn't want to take any more shots. So I got a lot of shot, you know, whatever they were shooting us up with when I was in the military, I mm. probably got, you know, 12 different shots, especially, uh, when I had to go overseas. And, um, and so I always joked when I got out, I'm like, I don't want any, any more shots. I had enough. So I would never get the flu shot. But my joke was to like my family, Oh, did you, did you get the flu shot? I'm like, no, that's where the zombies are coming from. Cause I, you know, once you see these <laughs> movies where it's the most mass produced so that, you know, the flu shot is the most mass produced, uh, vaccine, uh, that changes. Now there's other ones, obviously polio and all, you know, all the main ones, mm -hmm. Those are mass produced for the whole world, whatever. But the flu uh, shot has to be uh, adjusted and modified. Yeah, tailored to your environment every because year. The flu is different for because it yeah. rapidly changes, and it's it's different for every environment. Also, depending right. on like temperature, humidity, stuff like that. So there's a lot of variables involved, and they have to mass produce it in a short amount of time because there's new, you know, variant, <laughs> whatever it's called, you know, the new. Uh, influenza uh, virus, whatever it is, you know, from last year to this year, it's morphed, whatever it is. There's like 150 new ones, I guess, uh, every year. So that, so they've got a timeline. So it's not like they can just take what they had last year and, you know, reproduce it like they do, you know, polio or whatever else. Like this has to be modified. So, so they're on a timeline, kind of a, you know, hey, I got to get this into the doctor's offices by October because that's when they start giving the flu shots. So I could just see as many techs as there are, you know, technicians that are mixing this stuff. You ever see those little centrifuges that they put yeah. the little vials in and they spin them? There was yeah. a movie. I'm sure it was a zombie movie. I can't remember which one. It might have been the one with uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, uh, World War Z. World War Z. I think it was that yeah. one where it shows the centrifuge and the guy gets cut, you know, because he's not paying attention. He's tired. Mm -hmm. I could just see this happening with the flu virus. So he gets, you know, somebody is tired or hungover. They, they're they working too many hours, you know, trying to pump this thing out. And they make one small mistake. Their blood gets mixed into it or some other bacteria on the floor. I don't know. Yeah. But and now all of a sudden, it only takes one human to... When they yeah, get one mistake, the shot, it's not picked up, and exactly. then it's just going to be worldwide. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And now it's uh, you know one. Of course, we see how fast it spreads in uh, zombie movies. Uh, you know, it doesn't take long. I'm like, no, I'm not <laughs> getting that flu virus shot. Hell no, that's even a zombie like virus. even going away from like you know fictional zombie movies. We've seen how fast things spread with COVID. Like one, like what was it about Decemberish? We're hearing about some mysterious little disease going on in a small town in China. Yeah. Then we hear China's taking over. And then it's like, oh, we've got five cases in the UK. We've got 5,000 cases in the UK. Yep. The UK's 500,000. <laughs> yeah, and just uh, rapidly. And of course, of three months or so, the whole world was locked down yeah. because of a, a disease. Well, I always made, still I made this joke too about. Tom Clancy predicted the... Uh predicted covid or something similar you know uh i mean scientists have been talking about that for years uh, i remember reading an article in the 90s where uh, scientists talked about the next because you know this is when uh coming out of the cold war in the 80s mm -hmm. everyone thinks that world war three and nuclear war is going to end life on the planet and these scientists were coming out in the you know mid to late 90s saying no what's going to end the human race is uh is you know, smaller than like microscopic, it's going to be a new bug. Mm -hmm. So whatever new bug that's, uh, you know, more, you know, stronger or more powerful than our immune system or whatever, uh, that's going to end humans. So they've been talking about that mm -hmm. for a long time, but Tom Clancy with, um, the game, uh, division, the division. Oh, so, I remember that. Yeah. And the division two, you know, what's that, you know, that's based on that kind of scenario. And how, what was that based on any of his actual work? Because I know Ubisoft has just decided, oh, like, yeah. any tactical shooter, they're just going to throw Tom Clancy's name on it, despite him being well, dead for like 30 years or whatever. Yeah, so this was, uh, so these are writings that he never put into a book. This is uh, his right. research. So when he was uh, researching, you know, he had ties to the, to the U.S. Navy. I think mm -hmm. 
I wonder, I can't remember if he was a veteran or not. I don't, I don't think he was, but he spent a lot of time researching with uh, the military. And, um, and so he knew about, and he wrote about this uh, in his own writings where like that weren't in a book, in a novel, but he, mm -hmm. um, he talked about how the military does, uh, they do tests all the time. They'll run small uh, tests in different environments, you know, just um, virtual, you know, simulation tests or whatever. Yeah. Like what would happen if this, and they take the pop, they take all the variables of a, of a city. So they, you know, it's all just numbers basically, right? Uh, categories of people, uh, high class, low class, uh, whatever it is. Uh, and then uh, basically, you know, like uh, crime stats, Okay, all these different statistics, and then uh, what happens if the power goes out in a in a city like this for mm -hmm. three weeks, whatever? Um, and they they do all these numbers. So he had a lot of uh, interesting facts about the military doing these kind of studies, or the government doing these kind of studies mm -hmm. uh, over the years, like even back in the eighties. And um, and so the vision was based on some of that stuff that he talked about or wrote about way back then but never went into like a i think parts yeah, of those right parts of those are in certain books like he wrote um oh shit what was it called net net force or uh i used to read a lot of his books um mm -hmm. but anyway it was like the cyber division but he predicted it before like this is in the 90s yeah. when the internet was very very new um and slow, you know, for normal people. So, uh, anyway, but yeah, a lot of that, uh, the division is based on that. And it was, uh, what would happen and how these different factions break up. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the walking dead shows a lot mm -hmm. of how that would be, you know, pretty similar society I'm very, breakdown. I'm very controversial with the walking dead, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that would be a, a that would be one of those uh, rapid fire questions. The Walking Dead, yes or no? Good uh, or bad? Season one, yes. Rest, no. Thank you. I ex <laughs> I feel exactly the same way. I watched. Do you know the what? There first we go. Episode, give you the short. One. Do you know the uh, short history? Do you know the history of what happened with the Walking Dead? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Frank first Darabon. season they had different writers, and then yeah, was, uh, uh, first season was first season was uh, directed by Frank Darabon, who's I, I can't remember what he did. Uh, he's a great, he's a fantastic director. He pulled all his actor friends from this, from like the previous projects. They all agreed to come in way under their usual budget. You know, that just because they wanted to work with Frank, they knew he had a great project, he had great writing, you know. It was all there. He had all the key elements. He handed season one to AMC on a golden platter, you know. I've came on under budget, I've given you exactly what you want, and it's artistically great. And then season two, they're like, all right, we're going to cut your budget, but we want twice the episodes. Mm. Uh, no, I didn't please. And obviously Frank was, you're, you're taking the piss, right? I've given you this, your most successful show in a while, on a silver player. All these great actors are coming in under budget, you know. And uh, their response was, well, maybe we can cut the budget by just, you know, not seeing the zombies, just hearing them now and then. Jesus. They they genuinely they genuinely said that they were like, you know, they wanted to just visual like audioize the zombies, not visualize them. Uh, that's why a lot of the characters that are in the comics are killed off on the show uh, very early. It's because the actors were like, if Frank's not there, we're leaving. Yeah, I don't want to work on this anymore because they fired Frank Darabon after he complained that Jesus. Uh, they were cutting his budget, and they they brought in somebody else. But he was basically like Frank Darabon had worked on like a quarter or half of the sh the first the second season. Yeah, but it wasn't you know it was way under budget, and you know they they just did it very poorly. Uh, that's why I'll always say like season one's amazing, but it got very lazy for the yep. rest. Like it does the same cycle of. You know, big threat appears. All right, let's we're we're at a low point, guys. We'll try and solve it. A lot of filler. 
they give the big fight with the big bad. Occasionally some zombies do some stuff, but they're not really a factor. They have all this god armor, so it's like, no, there's no real threat. Somebody will get bit, and they'll worry about that for a bit, but it just happens every season, and it's like, I watched it up until like season 7 or whatever, the one with Meryl, uh, not Meryl, it's, uh, what's his name, uh, the guy with the bat. Uh, shit, what's his name? I don't know, I, didn't, I stopped watching it, so... <laughs> it's, uh, you know that guy I'm talking about, though, like the guy with the bat. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, the one, the one where uh, that season they they jumped the shark very early in the season, like uh, by killing a bunch of characters, and then there's so much filler downtime after that, and you're like, why am I watching this? What am I getting out of this? Yeah. I know there's something coming, but I don't have to watch. I don't want to watch 20 episodes to get there where nothing happens. Yeah, I was. Uh, I think it's season. Well, towards the end of season one, or maybe the beginning of season two. I don't know, but one of the first things I remember irritating me. It, this is. Uh, the, it was the episode where um, Rick actually mm-hmm. finds his wife and kid, or whatever. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Was that season one? That's season one. Yeah. The very end, towards the end. So th- during that episode, uh, I'm, I'm loving it up until then. And then, the, and I'm going, so this one guy that's in the group, I can't remember his name, but he's, he just needs to get away from the group. For, this is what it seemed like. He goes out and he's having, I guess he's having nightmares or something. So he goes, a, a, just a, not even a football field, not even a hundred yards away. He's just right there. You can see him. He's not drawing attention or nothing. Uh, he's digging holes like a grave, mm-hmm. and the whole group has to go over there and talk to him. And they end up tying him or chaining him or handcuffing him to a tree because they didn't like him digging because it was scaring the kids or some shit. And I'm going, yeah, man, who the fuck this, wrote yeah. this? What, what the guy's not doing anything wrong. He's not hurting anyone. He's blowing off steam or whatever. Uh, he's getting some physical exercise in, and uh, he's not attracting any zombies. He's not being loud. Y'all yeah, are the he's... ones, you know. It just fucking irritated the shit. I, mean, I couldn't get over it, honestly. Like that kind of dumb drama. Like they made drama yeah. just to, just for the sake of drama. Yeah, there was. Uh, oh, I think it's in season bro. two. They're like, they're on the highway. They're walking up, and uh, or they're doing something. I think somebody might have been stuck under a car or something. And they're like, uh, they lead, that somebody climbs on top of an RV to like keep watch. So, yeah. you know, he's, he's looking out his binoculars. The road is completely clear. There's nothing in sight. Right. Not five minutes goes by. He turns his back for one minute, turns around, picks up the binoculars. There's a horde. They've moved <laughs> in and it's like thousands of them. And you're like, no, no. Where did they come from? Explain yeah. where they came from. I hate you would when see they don't them in the shit, bro. It's it got very lazy at points, but mm-hmm. that's the Walking Dead for you. The it's AMC's only wholly owned project. Everything else they co-own with another partner or group. AMC own like the rights, the majority rights to the Walking Dead, which is why there's so many spin-off shows. There's so much merchandise. There's so much promotional stuff of it. It's why they won't let it fucking end. No. Uh, because it's it's their money, man. It's their money maker. Oh, for you sure. You know, like they had Game of Thrones, but they co-owned that with uh, HBO and right. uh, a few other subsidiaries. But uh, AMC wholly own The Walking Dead, which is why you got you know, Fear of the Walking Dead. You got uh, there was like a few games that released and immediately died. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's a bunch of fucking shit marketing they've done. <laughs> I hate AMC. You know man. what's They're funny is, <laughs> I uh, I've talked with I've had a couple people on here on the podcast that uh, we talk about airsoft because this is it's quite well, incredible. That... We've gone like <laughs> what an hour or so and then I talk to single airsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, man. You well, get there eventually. It, it you just know. you know I mean that's mostly how these go. But uh, I, don't I had mind a couple them, guys on here that that actually work uh, are actors uh, on The Walking Dead. So they live in Georgia, and you know most of The Walking Dead or all of it—I don't know—is filmed in Georgia. 
yeah, you, you know, I, in America. So I think that's because they got like uh, I think Jorah's got really for like good uh, either tax breaks or like uh, a lot of government funding for yeah. filming in Georgia, obviously because it's gonna attract people to Georgia. It's good for their tourism. Sure. Yeah, I don't blame them for doing that. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Glasgow does a lot of that. The new Indiana Jones film was filmed in Glasgow for the, oh, the New York scenes. Oh, nice. They, uh, they did up all the streets and uh, I walked through Glasgow and seen it all. And I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. All these like American flags, banners, they did all the shop fronts. That was really cool to see. That's pretty uh, cool. One of the guys I was yeah, talking to, a lot, but... he's, uh, he lives uh, right by, he lives in the UK, and I can't remember what town, but it's right outside of the town that um, Peaky Blinders was filmed. That show? Right. Uh, I've not seen it. I don't know where that's filmed. Okay. I've, I assumed it was sort of filmed Bur- in London. Uh, but I, Berlin, Birmingham, maybe? Oh, Birmingham, bro. That, Birmingham. I would say I could believe that. That sounds yeah. about right. But he was talking like he, you know, he was so close to where he where he worked and where he, uh, you know, lived that uh, he would see the set, so he could look mm-hmm. out the building window and see, you know, the, the set. He actually walked onto the set one time, and the security guard got him, whatever, <laughs> and talked to him, whatever. He's got some cool stories about it uh, from being over there, but it's pretty cool because I watched the whole season of that of the Peaky Blinders, and and it came up in conversation while we were talking, and. Uh, I, he might have brought it up, and I said, "Oh, I watched that whole thing. It was cool, you know." And he's like, "Yeah, you know this one scene." I was like, "Because I had just watched it when I talked to him, yeah, or just got done watching it." But so uh, anyway, well, how did you get uh, started into airsoft? Right, we're finally reaching this point. Uh, <laughs> it was when I was uh, it's twenty eighteen. I was, uh, you know, just a few of my friends were just like, "We're going to try this airsoft thing." you want to join us? I had literally zero idea what this was. Like, uh, I agreed to it, and then went and watched, like, I just googled, what, what is Airsoft? I was just happy to be doing something, because I was bored of my night at the time. And then I was like, alright, this looks kind of cool, let's, let's try this. I get there, and, uh, I get given this, uh, this little AK-74U, I get given this really uncomfortable mesh mask, I get given a bottle of BBs and uh, you know, I head out in the field and I don't think I had a single thing, I don't think I was any contribution, I don't think I was really doing anything at all except having the most fun I've ever had, just running about shooting things <laughs> or in my case probably not hitting anything but you know, just shooting <laughs> this gun and I was like this is so cool and like we went a few times after that, started getting our, like, our own guns and that. Uh, this was back before I was like really into like knowing gun brands, knowing what's good, what's not. So I was just p- picking guns from like, oh, I like this gun in color, I'm going to get that. I got an, an AUG, it was really shit, it broke. I sent it back, got a FAMAS, that was really shit. Dealt with that for ages, eventually sold it, and then got a Scorpion Evo. Which was like my first good gun because that thing was actually decent. Nice. And I used to go to. Uh, I started out uh, cycled section eight. It's very well known for. Uh, it's very well known for like Scout the Doggy, if you've heard of him. Like the, hmm. some like a big photographer in Scotland, and he's not quite worldwide. I'd say it does like all of YouTube and big on that and that. But uh, from there. I went to like a CQB site called The Depot, which is very well regarded in uh, Scotland. It's yeah. very popular. And I love CQB. Like I, when I played outdoors, I was like, yeah, this is kind of not so fun. It's a lot of walking. It's a lot of hiking, you know. Right. Uh, but indoors, was a lot, it was a lot more of my speed because it's like really fast paced, really close. I could actually see like actually hitting somebody yeah. rather than like, you know, shooting outdoors, losing track. And, like, I don't even know where you went, mate. I'm, lost but <laughs> ckb was really easy to understand you know just ran out sprinted at somebody and shot them it's it was just so much fun so i played there for a good a good few years i wasn't like super often there but it's like every month to get there and then that must have been like a year or two yeah i think it was like that was through 2019 
was like 2020 COVID hit, so the the airsoft scene died for a bit. Like it was all nobody could play anywhere. Right. So uh, 2021, uh, there was a field opening in Cumbernauld at an old paintball site. Uh, I think that was the sort of end of 2020, 2021. Uh, I had. Uh, there was a few like test games being up on and the guy I knew at the time was like, you should come along to the test games, but I never really got invited. So I never actually went. He just told me I should come and then never actually invited me. I was quite sad about that. But when the site fully opened, I like, I was, I was like, all right, this is literally 10 minutes from my house. Yeah. I drive down the motorway. I'm there. Let's check this out. I checked it out. And the site is incredible. And I've just been going there regularly ever since. I eventually got a lot more like friendly with the like the site owner, the, the regulars, and the marshals. I became like really good friends with them. Eventually, I was sort of like, was sort of, like friends with them, but not on like a really like personal level. It wasn't until I sort of came out as trans uh, that like. I remember messaging with one of my friends who was also sort of marshal there. Yeah. I messaged him saying like, uh, like talking to him about it. And I was just like, I, I want to come out to them. I want to talk about them with them, but like, I don't know how they're going to react. Cause in my eyes at the time, Airsoft has a very like, you know, man's man, lad culture to it. Yeah. I didn't really know how they're going to react to this. Like, you know, kind of, Kind of out there, strange thing to them, right? But like, uh, just messaged them, and he was like, "I'll talk to them for you." He sort of talked to them about it, saying how I felt, and like, and like, ever since then, they've been like super, super welcoming and comfortable with it, right? Uh, and obviously, from there, I made like a lot more friends, became really good friends with the martial team, and uh, from I think it was the start of twenty twenty two. I, I got sort of interested in photography. I'd always been like sort of interested in photography, never really like like I didn't really have a camera and I just sort of took pictures on my phone and I always was told like, ah, oh, you take a good photo and I was like I really liked field photographers because it was you know, it felt really good when you're like, you know, you're out there, you're in your your Sunday best and you get your picture taken, you see it on Facebook later and you're like, Oh, I look awesome. Right. I liked that feeling. It's got the camera from a uh, good friend at the time, Clear, uh, Craig Cairns, Clear Visuals. Uh, you know, I just messaged them and I was like, uh, hey, I'm looking to get an airsoft photography. Do you, like, what kind of camera would you recommend? And he recommended my camera and then said, like, I've actually got a spare camera. I, like, upgraded my my camera. I've got different lens, different body. Uh, yeah. So I've got one spare if you want to buy it. So I was like, that's awesome. I'm gonna like you know, bring it up to the field to have a wee look. And then I'll say I bought the camera. Uh yeah, what do you use? Oh my camera's never said there was a camera exactly. I use a it's a Canon two thousand D. Uh okay. the lens that was on it. Actually two seconds, I'll grab the camera. Uh yeah, sort of say. Uh, yeah, so Canon 2000D. Very snazzy. Oh, that's uh, nice. Okay. And the lens that was on it is a uh, macro uh, 0.25 to no, 18 to 55 mil. Yeah. Just a little lens. But uh, so that's what I used for. A good six or six or seven, eight months maybe. Okay. Uh, and it's it's an alright little lens, like it's great for close ups. The thing is it's got like no range. Uh, but I used that for a while, got like really into photography. Like I just loved uh, like I think a part of it's like I love the attention you get from it. Like people are all like 
oh, you know, take my picture, you know, uh, right. oh, when, where can I find that? Where can I see that? You know, like, you know, people, re- I, like, I get off on the, like, people really appreciate it. People love it. They're like, oh, oh yeah. thank you so much for taking my picture, you know. That, that joy I get from seeing people so happy to see themselves captured is, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, more, it's my, like, lens I use now. I got this, uh, 15 months ago, uh, da, 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 55 to 250 mil, a big boy, uh, and it's, it is really good. I like that lens a lot, because I can get, like, my problem before with the little lens was, if I wanted to get someone's picture, I'd basically, like, be running up to them, and I'd have to get quite close to get a clear picture. Right. So I felt like I was really in the way, I was really, you know, mm-hmm. distracting, because obviously people would turn to look and see there's a big fucking camera shoved in their face. Uh, <laughs> Not only that, you're giving away was, their position, like, big time, yeah, right? Yeah, that as well. <laughs> so I was like, right, I need to invest in a better lens. Yeah. Uh, so I sold, sold some guns, because I was a massive, like, like uh, I was really into like, just buying guns I liked instead of actually using them. Yeah. So I just sold a bunch of stuff that I didn't use, bought a lens, uh, and this one is just incredible because obviously I can I get a much better quality close up, but I can also just zoom right in on somebody like a good like uh, I want to see a few dozen meters or so, like not meters off. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm terrible at distance, but you know, <laughs> I get a very good distance on folk. And I can still right. get good, clear focus on them. And once I got that lens, I started like taking editing a bit more serious. Like, uh, gotcha. when I took photos before, I was just uploading them like as is because I liked the idea of people being able to edit it themselves if they wanted to. Just mm-hmm. this real airsoft captured was what I was going for. Gotcha. Uh, but more recently, I've been like just importing the photos onto my phone, editing them on Lightroom. Just lightly. I'm not like, you know, Photoshop and stuff out, editing this and no, that. You just, uh, I'm just like just improving the color. color. Yeah. Yeah, the improving contrast, the color, the uh, contrast, brightness. focus. Yeah. You know, making the, like getting a bit more out of the fold than just as is. Because with like a little bit of tweaking, you can make the photo look exactly the same, just better. That's mm-hmm. what I was going for rather than this over edited. I think even if you look back at like my really old photos on Instagram, I hate them. Like they're so over edited. Like there's a lot of saturation. They're really over edited. <laughs> I hate those ones. But uh, more more recent photos, I'm like, I look at them and I'm like, holy shit, these are great. Because I'm I'm by no means like like experienced with photography. I've never done like a course. Never done any training. Not done any. Like classes or anything, I've never watched a t- fucking even a YouTube tutorial on what to do. I literally oh. just bought a camera, walked out in the field, and you know, did it. Uh, Holy shit! Okay, I've just got like a without like sending like a, a brag or so like you know whatever. But like, I feel like I've got a natural sort of talent for it. Yeah, because uh, I will admit I know how to take a damn good photo somehow. Uh, just the lens being the biggest part of you know upgrading because right i feel like if you look at photos between when i got the lens and a uh, before the photos are decent but they got much better i think when the lens yeah i was gonna say that i've had a handful of uh, photographers on here and um mm-hmm. they uh they talk about that you know the lens being the le- that's uh, I remember I was at uh, Players of War, a field in uh, Falkirk in Scotland. Great site. Okay. Uh, I went there to do photos just like once, and uh, excuse me, uh, I was talking with the site owners to do some photos themselves. Like they like they got one of those cameras, like big massive white lenses, oh, ones yeah. that can. Like, they're just actually massive, and they're like, that's the first thing you upgrade your lens. You know, that's what will change your life. And they were totally right. Like, it, 
it's it's so much better now because I can also got better lens. Uh, it's not so good for it's the only, the only drawback I found with it is not as good for the close ups. Also, the lens is a lot longer, so I need to be a bit further back for the close ups. Okay. Whereas the other one, I could be like right up in your face and get a nice clear photo. Yeah. This one I need to like a bit of distance, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I just need to. I mean, I'm mostly outdoors anyway, so. Yeah, I'm gonna. Sh do you mind if I share the screen? Of course, son. Go. Yeah, I do. I'm just pulling up, so I'm like looking at it as well. Oh yeah. There it is. So it's uh, is it? How do you say your? Is it Rachel? Rachel, Rachel Airsoft. Zero four five one. Yeah. Uh, my favorite photo of all time is the, the one in the cover photo. I uh, that's my friend Alan that I mentioned earlier that, like, has everything. Uh, oh shit! Yeah. I love that photo, man. Like it's, it's perfect. That's cool. Uh, most recent, like, outing was uh, last Sunday. It was that Section 8. Uh, it was their last game of the year. And some of the photos from that, I love it. Like, the, that that guy, I uh, I love his kit. Like, yeah, it looks cool as shit. Up. I put a lot more editing into those ones because I was just obsessed with that kit. Uh, I spoke to him on the day, but I couldn't understand a word he was saying for that mask. It was not good. <laughs> uh, really? I, I waiting for, it was like, he was walking along with me down this path, and I, he was like, I think he asked, like, what my, uh, where, where the photos would be, and I was like, sorry? Because I could not understand a word he was saying, but he was a nice guy. He was such a nice guy. It's like, I was just like, what? Like, write it down. Um, <laughs> you know, write down what you're saying. Same language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, like, it's one thing I feel bad about and something I feel like I need to improve with with photos is I feel like a bit of a snob when I take photos, like, uh, I typically, like, I try to force myself to take pictures of, like, you know, rentals, people in hoodies and that, because, like, these people deserve to have their photos taken, too, like, yeah, I just try to, like, my focus always seems to go towards, like, these really cool kits. Right, I mean, that's... Which is only, I feel like it's only natural, you know, the... Well, sure. People that are eye grabbing not... are going to be eye grabbing. Absolutely. Is uh, yeah. If you mm -hmm. had, I just well, feel bad know... for people that are just, you know, they're showing up. They're just there for a casual day. They're just in like a jacket or just like jeans and that. So I try to take up at least. I try and get everybody in a photo at least once. I feel right. bad when people message and say like, "Hey, is there any more photos to go up? I've not seen any of me." And I'm like, "Oh no, oh, shit!" <laughs> like, I feel like crying. <laughs> I do. I feel. I feel really bad. So you should. I try. I try. <laughs> <I'm frank. laughs> uh, uh, I do. I feel really bad when I've missed somebody and they like messed me because I'm like, uh, because obviously like you get that one shot a day, like a weekend usually, sometimes twice, but you're only ever going to see the same person once. You might right. never see them again. You might never get that opportunity That's again. True. So you know. Now this guy, what what's he wearing on his head, bro? Uh, it's tinsel. Do you not have tinsel in America? Oh yeah, yeah, we got it. All right, it's just, I like, just, it's yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's one of the marshals at Section Eight. Uh, is it Christmas time or something? Yeah, is so this that's reason? yeah, that's that's sort of, it wasn't exactly Christmas a themed day, but oh, obviously okay. it's the last the last game day of the year. It's right gotcha. before Christmas, so there's a lot of people in like Santa hats and oh yeah, I see. Okay. Gear. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to next next week. Uh, or I don't know when this is going up, but uh, 28th of uh, December, it's yeah. the Area 66 Christmas game, and I know we've got a lot planned for that. There's a lot of talk in the Marshall chat. We're all very excited. Uh, I'll, I think it's on my... I'll, I'll need to forward you this image. It's on my personal Facebook and I face Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I'll forward it to you. It's a photo taken by uh, same guy who's got to put the camera off. Uh, clear visuals, Craig. Uh, why is this not working? Uh, for the Christmas game last year. Uh, sorry, it's not working. I'm going to screenshot this and just. 
fucking send it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, he uh, he took this shot of me in my Christmas outfit, and I was I love this photo. He's a really good photographer. Uh, doesn't do much airsoft recently, but I hope he's keeping well. Stream is ended. Uh, uh, Did you send it? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I just realized like, my webcam is just going to be like staring at my phone for the past five minutes, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that outfit is most likely returning for Christmas. Yeah. The red urban tra- camel trousers and this, this funky red red. Yeah, I love that thought. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh yeah. I've talked dude, I've talked to have you heard of uh Krios photography? Yeah. Uh, I've been speaking to him quite a lot recently. I've oh good. Partnered with him. Uh, that uh, section eight shoot was the first one that sort of done with him. Yeah. Uh, so I think the photos get uploaded to his like site. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I saw like when he pitched it to me, he pitched it with the like, you know, he takes a uh, he takes a certain amount and then after that everything goes to me or whatever. Right. Um, I'm not I'm not wholly interested in the money side of airsoft. Like Gotcha. This is a hobby for me. I do it for fun. I do it for the, the good of the players. If I can make a bit of money off it for this without actually like charging people for shoots, sure. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm mostly in it for like the networking, you know, the the networking, the sort of, you know, getting out there. Uh, but I've been speaking to him a lot about it. He's he's a really cool guy. I listened to yeah. the I did listen to a little bit of the podcast you did with him. Okay. It's the first time I've heard his voice. It's Deeper than I expected. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that is a really cool guy. I like, I like his idea. It sounds really good, which is why I got involved. Right. Because uh, I could just, you know, start charging people for photos and that, but like, I just don't think that's what it should be about, man. Uh, I put a little bit of watermark on my photos, and I'm happy with that. If yeah. people want them removed. Like I've I've had a couple people like ask me like can I get the photo without the uh, watermark? In that case, I would be like, well, no, I want a little donation then because the watermark is quite small, it's quite insignificant, it's hard to see. Gotcha. Uh, you know, if you if you want the original, I can give you it, man. Like, just if it's worth that much to you, then sure. But honestly, I'm not interested in making money off yourself as a whole. If I right. could, I would, but, you know, it's a hobby at the end of the day. Well, that's uh, that's kind of like what me and him talked about, uh, you know, with Krios. It was, um, you know, the you guys, you know, photographers have, uh, you're providing a service. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if you're not trying to, you're like, you're doing it because you enjoy it. Yeah. But uh, it is, you're providing something to, to people that, mm-hmm. that they really love. Um, and you do have some investment in your equipment and of also your time going there. So it's, uh, you know, and, and you're, I know it doesn't feel like work, but you're actually working like you're, 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 yeah. you're doing something you like, but, uh, you're giving, you're providing something. So when you go there to play airsoft, mm-hmm. you're not really providing something for someone else. Once they leave, no, it's, once, it's a very selfish thing, over, honestly. Yeah. It's yeah, very, you're, uh, but, yeah, you're, you're, you're wasting your own money, basically. Yeah. You're, Right. You know, you're not getting so, the TVs back. You know, you're wasting your time. You could be doing more productive things. You're having fun. Right. That's that's yeah, you're what you're fun. generating. Entertainment. Uh, mm-hmm. When I'm doing photos, I'm having fun with other players. I'm, you know, doing service for them. Right. I'm not necessarily. I'm not getting paid, but you know, there are sort of benefits to it. You know, yeah. I'm very, very. I'm on the Marshall team with uh, Area 66. Very good friends with all the people there. Met some great people through it. Uh, also, the site, the site manager, like, even if I wasn't taking photos that day, we get walk, I get walk on for free, because like, I'm, I'm up there every weekend doing photos, yeah. uh, giving up my time. So he's like, he's happy for me to play for free. That's perfect thing. Me gives us a little bit of a discount every now and then on stuff if we're buying it for him. Uh, 
you know, so I'm not I'm not getting paid necessarily, but you know, there are benefits to it. I'm, uh, but sure. again, it's not why I'm doing it. It's, right, right. It's just a right, an extra, extra little bonus on top. But yeah, if never sure. wasn't there, I'd still be doing photos. I do go to other sites, not as often as I like, but uh, I do go to other sites every now and then to see what's going on. Uh, I do need to get more sites more often though. It's just uh, been busy with work recently, so I've not been getting too much airsoft. Uh, How many sites do you guys have close to you? Like within an hour drive. So, well, if I find an hour drive, uh, so easy, easy for me to reach is uh, the, the, the the new depot site, which is up in Port Glasgow. It's about an hour, an hour fifty minutes drive, uh, fifty minutes an hour drive. Uh, it's an alright site. Uh, it just needs a bit more development, and it's a bit a bit too expensive, like mm. uh, like just to go. Because it's like fifty minutes, it's twenty five pound booking, and then another ten pound at the door. Okay. Whereas most sites are like twenty five pounds max. Right. Uh, but it's a, it's an alright site. It's good CQB, not as good as their old site, but they didn't have much choice in that. The landlords are kicked them out, I think. So gotcha. I don't know much about that. Uh, new site just needs like a few more, like a couple of years before it gets up to the reputation of the old site. Till they get it all sort of built up and cleared out, and that. Uh, there's also Biohazard Airsoft, which is another CQB site. It's uh, like an old warehouse converted into like a, it's got like a little like, lot of sections, hallways, and that. Uh, it's mm. really good. It's just a bit small. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's just how the site is. Like, uh, it's a great wee site though. Just it's, a, it's too far away for me to travel too often. We'll get up there yeah. like once, once or twice a year or so. Uh, Section 8 Airsoft, which is like 30, 40 minutes away from me. Great site. I love that site. It's a massive, massive woodland. Uh, well, else? Uh, Players of War, which is like 20, 30 minutes away from me. Damn. In uh, Falkirk. It's yeah, yeah, a great it's site. A it's, a, it's got a lot of... Uh, so what's the way to put it? It's, like, it's a very World War Two themed site. They encourage a lot of World War II... Uh, like cats themes and that right. uh, controversially among the community it's you know it's got a lot of uh you know german kits uh which oh okay i i like because it you know it's it's, it's controversial but it's you know it's i mean it's it looks history. great it's very it's like they're you know it's just they're very good kits is the way to put it like they're yeah. very very detailed they put a lot of effort in it they're uh if you look back from a photos there should be some there but they look, you know, they look great. There's no other way to put it. They, they just like they put a lot of effort in their kits, and uh, I mean, it's got all the respect you know, they for make, it. They make movies about, you know, yeah, they're historically based, and they the have way I the way German I think that people are like, oh, why do you have to dress up as a as a Nazi player? So the way I think of it is, you always need a bad guy. You always yeah, need a bad guy. A bad shit, guy. So, right. Uh, the German I mean, kit players, they all look incredible. You 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 know any airsoft game, you can't all mm -hmm. be on the same team. What is this yeah. real life? There's no NPCs. What are you fighting against? Mannequins. So yeah, you gotta have like, a <laughs> you gotta have you, a fucking, you can't you can't a have it one way and not the other. You you've yeah, got a lot absolutely. of like you see Russian cat players all the time, right? And uh, well, that know, there's, dude, there's when, you know people of people that, dress up as like you know like Osama bin Laden. The games oh, right. and that's perfectly fine, but you dress up as you know a Nazi, a historically accurate sub figure, and people and lose that's their shit. That, yeah, you can't have it both ways. It's no, you you either it's either all allowed or not allowed. It's For it's real, weird, bro. But, uh, I think I found some of the. Photos I don't or, understand that either, but, man. Yeah. It's, but uh, uh, yeah, they've got great kits there. I love that site. The well, site owners are really of, nice. A lot of fields getting hate. Uh, this is when I was. This is back when, uh, whenever the Russia and Ukraine thing started, mm -hmm. then uh, a lot of these sites um, were getting a lot of negative feedback about their, you know, upcoming event for that weekend or the next weekend yeah. or whatever. About the there was uh, a, a very Russian, hilarious, like uh, it was crazy, a hilarious like bombardment on a site down in, uh, I think it was Wales. Uh, they posted a thing that they were doing a 
a Russia v Ukraine themed game day. Yeah. And obviously, as you can expect, people lost their shit at them, fucking <laughs> started abusing the hell out of them online, and they took it down quite rightfully. Uh, I don't know funny. what they were thinking with that. That was very awful. But uh, no, there's, there's a, I've got a lot of friends at. Uh, Shout out to Task Force Fuds. Uh, they're a lot of they're they're my like lo, like my little team that I join up with when I'm like playing airsoft. Yeah, they mostly wear Russian kit, and uh, you know, like I think they've all had like people say to them like, "Why are we in Russian kit? Don't you understand what's going on in the world right now?" And it's like, I they don't they're also like I don't support what's going on in Ukraine uh, in Ukraine. Don't support what the Russians are doing. No. I just like their kit, man. Right. That's all it is, you know. They make good AKs, they make good uniforms. What more do you want from me? I'm not endorsing their behavior. No. Yeah. It's... Yeah, for real. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't yeah, People I don't take yourself way either. too seriously sometimes. And it's like. Right. You gotta remember. Like, dude, we're, you know, it's LARPing, You know, grown okay. adults running around with toy guns, <laughs> you know, dressing up. Okay. The way I love to like, describe airsoft, and it completely ruins it, is it's a bunch of old men in the forest playing with tiny white balls. Like, <laughs> come on. You're horrible. <laughs> it, it's a horrible way of putting it. And it's, but when you think about it, it's like, wait a minute. Like, yeah, it's kind of true. Because I think I'm playing with their tiny white balls. And they're like, yeah. Gonna hit you with my oh, tiny white balls. Gonna throw my tiny white balls over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's, the one guy I was talking about earlier that, uh, in the UK, that um, when I was, we were talking about Peaky Blinders. That guy, Magaz, <laughs> yes. is his uh, Magaz actual is his um, Instagram. So uh, he, um, what's that? Magaz actual. Just... So his uh, he's oh, got a pod- he's got an airsoft podcast that's called Balls Deep Podcast. Oh, I know this guy. I've seen him online a bit. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's a good dude. I see him on like forums and every now and then. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I know, right? There are, uh, you know, a hand. Well, there's, there's always. You're always going to have people that, once they get into it, they're like, uh, you know, this is how it needs to be. We're going to tell you how to do it, and uh, if you don't take it as serious as I do, then um, yeah, what the fuck, you know. There's certain environments where that's that's all right. Like every sure. every year, there's a big uh, Scotland the England game, so all the like Scottish players go down to England. Oh, okay. uh, they play at a, it's a Ministry of Defence like site. It's run yeah. by uh, Sterling Airsoft, but it's used by the Ministry of Defence for training. And that they like obviously, I don't know, rent it out or you know, I don't know what their situation is, but they use it for airsoft. Right. Uh, they do like battle sims and combat missions there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but every year they do Scotland v England. It's a very serious event. I went last year. I didn't go with this year's one because it's not for me. It's it's way serious. Like people are going there with like their fully upgraded guns. They're going with night vision. They're going all fucking <laughs> like really prepared. They're right. They probably got more kit than most like actual soldiers. Actual military. Dudes. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're going real. there like with people that can't eat Osama bin Laden didn't have half the shit they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's a very very serious event. People right. take it very very serious. If you know you're not bringing your A game, if you're not pulling your weight. People are gonna fucking yell at you, and you know basically abuse you because yeah. you're not you you've shown up to this event and you're not you know you're not tipped up. It's that's how seriously people take it. Just why sure. I liked my experience there, but I wouldn't go again because obviously I'm not I'm not you know really competitive. I went, I tried my best, but I will never hold a candle to these fucking people. <laughs> I'm never gonna show up with a thousand pound <laughs> night vision unless. <laughs> Unless somebody was like, I won the lottery or something, I guess. But no yeah. shit, that that shit's expensive as hell, bro. Oh yeah, I've, damn. Okay, going back to my friend Alan, he's got night vision. He's he's big into that. Uh-huh. I looked through it once, and it's incredible. Like holy shit, looking yeah, through it, it is, is it's life changing because you look through it and you're like, wow. I never thought I'd see the stars like this. Like you look up at the sky, you can see the stars so clear. Yeah, it's beautiful, but I have just no need for. Thousands and thousands of pounds worth of uh-uh. high tech equipment that I'm gonna probably drop and break because I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you about your lenses. Do you uh, mm-hmm. have you ever gotten a shot? Had any of them shot yet? 
not the lenses themselves, like nothing shot out. Every now and then I hear like a dink off the body and I sort of like shit it a wee bit. I'm like, <laughs> oh no. But like, I've not broke anything yet. Okay. Uh, usually got like a, I don't like it's on this one. Uh, I've got like UV lenses just in the end, uh, just to keep it a little bit protected. Mm-hmm. None of these lenses have it on. Great. Uh, <laughs> I've usually got UV lenses on now. That's uh, what I've heard of. I think Krios was telling me about that. Um, Josh, yeah. Whatever. He uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's not going to like stop them from being broken, but it'll hopefully negate. It slows it down. A something. Bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to take the first hit. And right. at that point, I'll be like, right, need to be like hold back a bit. But I'm like, I'm very paranoid as a person. So when I'm out in the field, I'm like, usually, like, uh, yeah, that distance to go. Uh, I'm usually like sort of holding the camera down with a hand over the lens like that, mm. holding it upwards, you know, trying to negate the possibility as much as possible. Yeah. And, you know, trying my best to like also stay out the line of sight and uh, like fire even to try and not get shot. You know, I'm out there with high vis. I'm out there with you know usually a bright hat or something that can let people know that I'm not. There was one time I completely forgot I was late to the game day, and I was like, in such a rush to get out there. I just grabbed my camera, put my pro on, and ran out. And then. I was like, I'm getting shot a lot more than often. This is fucking weird. Like, <laughs> am I gonna have to tell these people to stop? And then like somebody said, Did you, "Where's your high vis? Did you drop it?" I'm like, "Oh fuck, I'm not wearing my high vis. That's why I'm getting shot." Oh, All right, I shit. deserve it then. So I just played the rest of that game, like just shot the rest of the game with no high vis. <laughs> got shot to all hell, but fully deserved what, you wear, like, it. Like a vest. Cause... Yeah, I've like a I've yellow... lost my vest. I've got like Safety a bright pink vest. Okay. Uh, that. It says on the back, please don't shoot. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work, but you know, you can try. Uh, the uh, the girl I had on, um, Val, click, click, boom, photography. I listened started... to about that, that, uh, okay, that podcast. Like, when you yeah, do you follow when her, you, on you, Instagram? Like, message... no, when you messaged me, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll check out about this, this podcast. So it's like in the car, I put it on Spotify, I listened to a bit on the way to work. That was really interesting. That podcast, I like that. Okay, oh, thanks. Man. Finish it, but uh, yeah, she's cool. Yeah, well, a part yeah, of her... not a lot of your self talk, but yeah, I quite I like know, that. Right? <laughs> part of her, uh, but yeah, part part of her, uh, like bio in the mm-hmm. you know, Instagram is quote unquote like her nickname is Val. Don't shoot me, click click boom <laughs> or whatever you know ph- photography. So uh, she yeah. had to put that in there because same thing. She was getting lit up. I just tell people like every time you shoot me, I delete one of your photos. Uh, that that tends to work. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, that's funny, man. So you enjoy yeah. it, man. You got a lot of fucking pictures on here, bro. Yeah, that's there good. was a a good period when I was getting there every single weekend. Yeah. Uh, I was like silly out every single weekend, taking photos. Uh, as of the past few months or so, I've started uh, started a retail job at uh, a shop. People in the UK will know us, uh, CEX. I don't think you have it in America because no, it's huh? like it's uh, basically a secondhand shop for yeah. like games, DVDs, media, and oh, like technology okay. and stuff. Yeah. So like people come in and like, hey, I got this old iPad. What are you give me for it? And you like, you know, you you put in the iPad mod, so we put in the like memory condition and all that, and it'll come out right. like you know you're getting about five pounds for that. Mm-hmm. Well, at least that's what people think for CEX. People think we give like five pound for everything, but generally <laughs> the prices are pretty decent. Like, uh, you know, we'll sell something for like 180, you'll get like 94 for it or something. Gotcha. It's probably, it's probably not bad, you know. Uh, well, I used could... to, you know, we have GameStop. You ever heard mm-hmm. of GameStop? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I used to run when I for the first three years I uh, moved to South Carolina down here. That was my job. Uh, I went from oh, factory GameStop, work. Yeah. To uh, running a GameStop, yeah, I ran a GameStop for three years, so we did the same thing, you know, and yeah, you know, trade ins. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love I, yeah. I love working there, but the other pro the other problem is like obviously this, the weekends are the busiest, so yeah, I'm, like working every Sunday when their stuff would be on, right? But uh, you know, every now and then when I was like start to mess it, I just say to my manager like, "Is it all right if I get next month, next next Sunday or whatever day I need off?" Right. Uh, usually all right with it if I 
it's given enough noise. So. How about Christmas? Do you guys do? Uh, are you, do you guys are you guys open or whatever for Christmas? Uh, closed Christmas, but I'm working Boxing Day and New Year's Eve, eh, Christmas Eve. Okay. Looking forward to that. <laughs> God, it was basically the day like uh, sold so much stuff like uh, just ton of phones like uh, oh, yeah. I kept having to like rearrange the shelves and all the cabinets because there's just so many gaps like you know people like take some Xbox games and then they'll just leave a gap so you like I have to reshuffle everything around but yeah uh, we were selling so much that you know we couldn't fill in the gaps it's it's messed up, man. It's it's too much oh, yeah. going on. And then we've got well, another you know, game that I was tomorrow. talking about earlier, like uh, Manhunt and shit. That, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of these uh, bigger games back then, like Call of Duty 4, uh, the first Modern Warfare, those came yeah. out when I was working, you know, during the years I was working there. So, uh, and then some of the, the big release of um, uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah. Uh, the Winter. Oh, I can't remember what the uh, version. Uh, Wrath of the Lich King, was it? Yes, that I know came my out. Well. That I came out well. when uh, when I went there. <laughs> I did that at my store. You know, we did. You know, of course, we did the midnight releases for oh, those. Yeah. Uh, they're fun, man. We had a fucking tower of these. You know, cases. You see all these videos of like these awesome midnight releases, like basically lunch parties and shops. Yeah. And like, I don't do them anymore. Uh. Uh-uh. There's like the midnight releases I've seen. It's just like you get your game and you go. They don't have these big parties. Like, I remember seeing videos of the Halo Free launch. You know, and like people were. That, that was, was awesome. insane. I wasn't working so there when, the at that time. I started right after that one, but I went to the game release, the midnight release for that. At our oh local man, it was so awesome. Jealous. And we we ordered the uh, me and my son ordered the legendary edition that came with that giant helmet. Yes, I still have it. Oh, please tell me you got that there, man. Like. I still I have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I hang should on. put it up here on this shelf back here, man. Because it's uh, such a cool piece. Like this, uh, this uh, pop right here, that Funko pop. I see earlier. Uh, yeah, that's a. I don't know, what, I don't know what point it is, but you see Master me like Chief. going like that, looking in, yeah, trying yeah. to see what your pop was because I recognized <laughs> the thing. But yeah, I've got I've got a bunch of pops, but none of them are like. I don't think I've got anything particularly rare. Uh, I've got a few like. Obviously, because I work in se- like a secondhand retail store, we get a lot of uh, like steel books and cool yep. editions and that. Just today, uh, I got to send out. Uh, you seen the Ghost of Tsushima collector's edition? Right. I got to box that up and send it away. It's really cool. Oh, and then right after, somebody came in with the GTA Four like special edition. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Really cool. It's like a lockbox. Right. Yeah, and like it's got a key, you open it up and it's got like a duffel bag inside. Uh-huh. Also based off of like the bank case and that, but it's so cool. It is cool. Uh, if that's still we did there, it when I, I get... that that came out when I worked there. So we did the midnight release for that as well. Yeah, that's cool as yeah. hell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if that's still there when I get paid, I'm definitely taking that because it's so <laughs> cool. It's the best the best part of working there. Like Yeah. It's it's rude to say, but you get first dibs and everything, like Oh, sure. So, Something will come through, and you're like, "That's not me." The shelf, putting that over there. Exactly. Someday, I remember I'd uh, I just bought a Wii because you can get Wiis really cheap, mm. and uh, bought a Wii, and I wanted the HDMI adapter for it. We sold them for like fifteen pound, and I was gonna buy it at the end of my shift, and then this kid came in, and uh, what he was buying a Wii, and he was like, "Have you got any of the HDMI adapters?" And my heart sank. I was like, am I going to have to sell this kid? That? I'm like, no, I'm going to be an asshole. Uh, sorry, no, none, none in stock. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've got one sitting on the shelf to my You're right. going to hell. I'm so going to hell. But like, I was just so... I was a terrible person. I was, uh, I was bad for that one. Yeah. Oh, I've done that so many times, bro. So many people. Another store will call over another GameStop. Hey, you got one of these that's showing you got one in stock. Nope. We just <laughs> sold it. <laughs> It's a, uh, it happened to me once, like a game came in, it was the only copy in the company, like there was no other ones. Right. Uh, Shadows of the Damned. And I like, oh, okay. I love my, uh, sorry, I'm throwing the sticker. Uh, I love the Silent Hill games, and that's made by a lot of the same people. You know, it's got uh, Kira Yamoka, the sound director. Oh, okay. Uh, 
he worked on yeah. that game. So it's Silver Hill freaked was, me the fuck out, bro. When I when I came uh, out, it's so fucking freaky, man. Oh yeah. Uh, but I seen this game come in and it's like gi- giant stack of uh, PS3 games. And I'm like, hold on, I need that. And uh, <laughs> it got bought in, and like ten minutes later, it like got uh, online ordered. Someone oh, online must have had a like a stock alert for it. Right. And also, so it came and stopped. They got an alert and immediately placed an order. Fuck. So I just said to my manager, like, hey, can I buy this now? And because it's going to get, like, it's somebody's wanting it online. So, like, he's just like, yeah, I'll put it for now. Just bought it, put on the, like, the, the thing, not found, sold in store. Uh, oh, shit. And there's not much they can do about that. But I checked, I checked, like, uh, a week later. And there was like five copies, so I don't oh, know. Okay. Let's let's see how many's in the company now. But uh, I've still only played that game once. I never really got around to it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I keep doing this. I keep buying games, and then like I like I play them once on the day, and I'm like, all right, cool. Now again. Yep. Oh god! Oh, the price has jumped right up. There's tons Demand. of copies though. Demand, bro. Yeah. Yeah. People are always like so amazed by like oh, why is this playstation 2 game worth like 60 pound you're like because it's really rare yeah it's, it's insane Siphon filter <laughs> yeah like uh we charge like it's like 50 60 pound for like playstation 4 controllers they don't make them anymore also they're wanting to go towards the ps5 so the price of them skyrocketing oh, and wow. people are like how, how is this ps4 controller 60 pound like well they don't make them anymore. It's hard to get yeah. them. Uh, it's it's insane. And I, I feel for people because obviously, like, obviously, people are on a mass, a, like, like a low budget now. Uh, but you know, price is the price, man. I can't change a thing. No, this is just the situation we're in. Right. Uh, yes, it's, it's an interesting job dealing with the public. Oh, I'm... especially I when it's. Especially when you're dealing with, like, you know, their money, you know. You're having to explain to somebody that they won't be able to sell their phone, like, because it's got this or that wrong with it. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I got, I got out of there. I got out of GameStop before they started taking uh, tablets and phones and all kind of shit, mm-hmm. whatever. And um, I went back into factory work. I told my I, – I, our store was doing really well. It was growing every year, the sales and all that shit. You know, I was there for three years. So it was like September-ish or maybe August. I left in September, but I think August or so. um, Over that summer, I was telling my boss, you know, the district manager, I'm like, "Uh, I'm not going to make it to uh, Christmas season this year. Uh, I just, I can't do it. He's like, why? What's wrong? He's like, your store is doing so well. I'm like, I don't. I'm going to kill somebody. I'm going to end up in jail because I'm going to, uh, I'm literally going to kill one of these customers at Christmas. We all get there sometimes, but <laughs> so I said, this is not for me, man. I'm a people person, but not when they're disrespectful. Yeah, you can only handle so uh, much. But... I'm not one to like take somebody like, you know, griping at you in your face kind of shit mm-hmm. where they, they know that there's not going to be a consequence. Um, then yeah. I just have to stand there and take it. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, nope, not this year, bro. I'm quite, Quite luckily, in my store, despite like the type of people that go into it, yeah, they're they're all relatively pretty polite. Like, uh, oh, gamers are great. They're... It's the parents. Oh yeah, you, every now and then you get something that's a bit bitchy, but it's oh, nothing dude. personal. Like, uh, it's it's weird. I've never really felt like you get people that are quite unhappy, but you know, you just sit, you're like they're not mad at you. Right. That's what I've always like seen. Like, I remember. There was this one time, like, um, I was, like, the only one on tills. Everyone else was away doing something else, and it was a massive line. And I kept apologizing to this woman, and she said, like, look, listen, don't say sorry, because it's not your fault. You're doing your best. You can only one person. Right. I just think it's fucking ridiculous that your shop's only got one person. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm the hero here. I'm, I'm the good guy. You're loving <laughs> me right now. But, yeah, it's... I'm amazed at how... Like peaceful, some of the people are like they're just fine. Um, oh yeah, it was, it was great. I had a really good time while I worked there. The it's only the, the only time I've seen like something incredibly exciting was a guy tried to steal a phone. Basically, like a 
uh, traded his in, went to buy another one. His card declined uh, for the like the remainder to pay, mm. and he was like, "Well, go give me my phone back." And also, my manager told him, "That's not your phone anymore. You've si- you sold it to us. You signed it away. That's not your property anymore." And uh, You'd have he to just buy went, it "Well, back. I'm, well, he just went. Well, obviously, it was more the the you couldn't buy it back, obviously, because it was more than what he got for it." Yeah. Uh, but the phone he was wanting to buy, he just went, "Oh, well, I'm taking this one." Snatched it off the counter, and like went to march out the store, and uh, also my manager just shouted to the supervisor who was out in the shop floor at the time talking with his friend who was asking him how the job's going, and then he just hears uh, a shout for him. Turns around, there's a guy marching towards him with this like phone that's stolen. And he's like, "You're you're not going anywhere, pal." And he's like, "Are you trying to try and stop me?" Uh, yes, because <laughs> well, the surprise was a lot bigger than him. Uh, the guy didn't even make it to the front door before, like, like Stephen, um, I'm at the supervisor, ran to the front door, got security. Security came marching in and like grabbed him, dragged him back to the counter, and got the phone off him. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've not seen him since. I think he's banned. So. <laughs> uh, but what's the the funniest part of that whole interaction was uh, I'm standing there watching this whole like fight going on. Everyone else is standing there staring, and this guy just comes up to the counter like, "Hi, I'm looking to see a couple of laptops." I'm like, "Yeah, no worries. I'll take you to see the laptops, man." Try to get him away from this bloody chaos going on over <laughs> in the corner. It's insane. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, a that was a fun shift, but like that's. That's the most exciting thing I've seen in that job, other than, you know, cool stuff. Like, cool stuff comes in all the time. You're like, ooh, let me let me see this. Like, we had the Arkham Knights collector's edition, like the big statue. Oh, that nice. came in the other day, and that was quite cool to see. But as for, like, negative experiences, that's the most exciting thing I've seen. And yeah. Honestly, it's seen more, like, seen more bigger fights at Airsoft. Like, uh, one of my favorite interactions... Like it, it pissed me off at the time, but looking back, it was really funny. Uh, I was playing at Area 66. I was sat in the corner of a location we call Love Shack. And uh, this guy, like, this guy runs in, shoots a shot at me, hits the wood like an inch from my side. And then he, like, apologized because he thought I was a friendly. And I thought he was a friendly as well. <laughs> and I was like, it's all right, you're right, you didn't hit me. So then he takes position like across from me uh, to cover the door, and then he shouts across like uh, to his team that he's in this room, and then I say to him like, "Wait, what team are you on? Non bands? Oh, I'm bands. Shot him up the ass, <laughs> and uh, he's just going arguing with me, saying that I was out, that he hit me, and I was like, he was like accused me of cheating, and I'm like, right, one, you agreed that you didn't hit me." You thought I was a friendly. That's your mistake. My mistake also, but I won out of this. Free. I'm a fucking marshal here. Why would I be cheating? I'm here every weekend. Like, what? I'm going to get banned if I cheat. Yeah. I'm the first person they're going to look at. Of course I'm not cheating. And we just, just both agreed to just walk off, but I was just like... Oh, okay. Well, I looking at it, it was so funny, but... Yeah. After after that interaction, it pissed me off, so I stopped playing for the day and just did photos, but... Yeah, that was funny. That's cool, man. Well, yeah. it's cool. You got a lot. You got a lot going on. You got, uh, you know, you. It doesn't marshaling. feel like it, but see when you like see it, it sounds like it sounds a bit fun. But uh, well, dude, you. I mean, you've got so many pictures posted. I mean, you got to take the. You got to go there. You got to take the pictures. You got to post <laughs> them on your on your, uh, you know, your page. Yeah. Edit them if you need to edit them. You've got to edit them. I mean, it's yeah. uh It's a lot. It's a lot involved. And then uh, I don't know about photos. Usually the good few hours of editing uh, some nice. photos do get more attention than others like see generic wide shots and that stuff that's not focused on things yeah i'll just do like i'll just go on lightroom click auto put a bit of a like a vignette on it mm. uh, i like and just call it that too. but yeah uh, if it's like a really good photo that i like i'll put a lot more effort into you know like tweaking the settings, getting it just perfect, changing the light a little right. bit. But the main thing is not changing the photo too much. Uh, which is something I actually stepped out of last 
last weekend, like with yeah. the the photos of the guy in the black kit with the the cool mask and that. I put a lot of editing into that and uh, like changed all the lighting, changed the whole dynamic of the photo, and I think it worked out quite well. So I might do that more, but generally I just want to keep like photos as is, just improve right. them a little. It's certainly interesting, I suppose. It's a yeah, fun process. Sure. That's good. You enjoy it. You know. Oh, I love. I love taking photos. So. Uh, I'm hoping maybe in the next, in the new year, maybe like do some different photography. Obviously, like because I'm working a lot more, I'm not getting as many weekends out. But I might try try some street photography. I don't know. Hmm. Like just go out in the streets, take pictures of people, and oh, that's cool. Yeah, I love like uh, there's a lot of characters in in Glasgow. It's a very like. You know, everyone. Uh, it was described to me as like everybody in Glasgow has main character energy. You know, you, you go out and everyone else has their little life going on. Like some cool people in there, but uh, yeah, I might try that a wee bit. Don't know. Yeah. Who knows? That's but good, man. I'm not gonna stop there, so anytime soon if I can help it. If I get hit by like a car or something, I suppose I'd stop, but. <laughs> There's, there's Let's hope that does nothing not in the foreseeable future. The no. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, man, it's been great uh, talking with you and get, getting to meet you and seeing all your photos. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know your Facebook page was, you know, attached to your Instagram. Yeah, it's still I, well, the same name, so right. Everyone's under that. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's not the not the fanciest names, but it's my name. Quite literally. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Well. I don't. Did you see? You know, you were talking about uh, when you came out to, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, the guys you work with or whatever. Um, I did a podcast with uh, Izzy, uh, Izzy Spice, his uh, Instagram uh, page or whatever, That's and cool. trans and uh, not familiar. Yeah. So I did a podcast. What was that? Um, it's been a few months. I can't remember what number it is. But uh, if you look up Izzy Spice uh, on Instagram, you'll see. I think I found it. Uh, is it Izzy Spice 672? It... Yes. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. Does a lot of uh, gun customized, like gun builds and stuff? Yeah, I can see a lot of like, so tech videos. Uh-huh. That's awesome. So, that. yeah, link up with uh, them. They He's, you know, I've, really... I know quite a few sort of... Uh, a few trans airsofters, it's yeah. It's it's weird, like uh you you want the representation but you also don't want to shove it in people's face. That's always right. been my sort of like uh my sort of thing with it. You just want uh, to be yourself. You don't you're not trying to force yeah. it down someone's throat. Yeah, I'm not I'm not there to like hey, I just I've always be said me. I'm not there to play gender politics, which is why I don't really care if somebody misgenders me at airsoft. Right. I'm not my most attractive when I'm there. I'm wearing fucking dirty ass <laughs> clothes and how yeah, dare you? I fucking dress up next time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm wearing tactical gear. I'm not meant to look good. But, right. uh, except that photo of me in the maid dress. I don't know if that's... If you came across that on the Instagram. That one's funny. I love that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't really care about, you know, gender on the field. I, the one thing I do like is, as myself, I like to be proud of who I am so that there's other people who see that and feel all right to be themselves. That's we should all be comfortable that's the with, biggest thing. Yeah. Right. With who we are. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I Cause feel I've like had a few the, uh... people, I have had a few people, sorry. Um, uh, like ask me like on the field, uh, like gender questions, trans questions. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm naturally quite approachable. I'm quite open. I'm quite friendly. Yeah. You seem like, uh, that. yeah. Like, uh, I don't think I've shown it in this very much, but I'm like very, very liberal with talking about myself. Like I, I'll talk about anything. Right. I'm very open. If you have any questions, I'm open to questions. Right. Genuinely, like anyone can ask me anything, as long as it's not stupid or you know, inappropriate. <laughs> I will right. answer it. Like uh, I'm happy to just talk, and I want myself to be like a good. A good character, a good, uh, the, like, uh, a good role model, yeah, yeah. for other, 
LGBT and trans people in the air, not just the air stuff, maybe just in general. Like, sure, I want to that. It, you know, like you can have like a like a life dream. Like, if you could be remembered as anything, what you'd want to be. That's yep. sort of what I'd want, just to be like a trans icon, someone that people can look at and go, you know, they accomplished a lot. I don't necessarily think I'm going to do a lot in my lifetime, but what little I do, I want to, you know, be remembered for, even if I don't like, I'm not, I probably am not going to get worldwide fame. I'm not going to be on, I'm not going to get my star in Hollywood, but <laughs> as long as I can impact a few people's lives, that's what's important because yeah. who needs the rest of it? Yeah, for sure, man. That's why, you know, the uh, our discord mm -hmm. uh, there's all these recommendations for uh when you set up your own discord server about uh rules you know putting a rule section in there yeah. and, all that. and i'm like bro fuck all that shit we got one rule okay it's called respect yeah. i don't care who you are where you come number from, one rule of yourself. i don't know if it that's i don't yeah. know if it is do you carry this rule over to america it's generally when you go to sites in, uh, in the uk they're just like don't be a dick that's yeah, generally just the, that's generally just the first rule. Exactly. Like, uh, you know, we're all there to play a game. If you're cheating, if you're you know harassing people, it ruins it for everyone. Right. So just don't be a dick. Just play the game. Yeah. Agreed. I think you yeah, can just that, cut that everything else. Make that the podcast. Well. Just me saying, <laughs> just play the fucking game. Just don't be a dick. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, that's that's literally my sentiment. Just want to be the best person I can be for myself so right. that I can be an inspiration to others. Good. I say that and then people meet me in real life and 99% of what I say is shit posting, but uh, <laughs> I think it's important to be yourself. Yeah, for sure. I'm not, it I don't is. really like change myself, numb myself or, you know, quieten myself at least. I'm very loud sometimes. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I'm not changing myself for anyone else. I'd rather be myself. And I'd rather be myself and have five friends than change myself and have 20 friends, you know? Yeah, for sure. Or at least Gosh. I know those people give a shit. I don't, uh, yeah, and I feel like there's this, um, you know, on that subject, there's a lot of people that once they get into the social media stuff, they start a page, they start whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, they get into this habit of only looking at how many likes something got. Oh, yeah. going, like, dude. I was talking with somebody. I take my likes um, every now and then, but yeah, generally it's like I'll look at it and go, eh, "That one got forty. That one got fifty. I wonder why. What did the algorithm pick up on?" Yeah, like my most recent post. I don't. I don't like share my posts around. I'll share the game. Like when I bulk post got game day photos, I'll fire it into like the UK airsoft communities, the Scottish one, blah blah blah. Right. And the, usually the site page. But like I don't share any of like the individual posts. Uh -huh. Like my most recent post has like forty nine likes. The one before that, forty two, and the one after that, thirty one. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I don't finish yet. What the numbers yeah, say, though. I'm right. happy with it. Yeah, I it's uh it's weird for me. I, I guess I can't relate when somebody is um, their how they feel about themselves mm -hmm. is attached to how many likes they get on a, on a post or, or yeah, not get, I, and, you know, they feel I, shitty. I'm I, like, I don't know. Oh. I just can't give a shit. Cause I'm like, I, I don't either. I'm like, what? I it's don't so get weird. It. I can sort of understand it. Like coming from somebody that was like, uh, quite unpopular growing up. Like I, was, I don't have many friends growing up. I'll admit like, uh, it does feel good to get attention now. Sure. But like at the same time, I'm just like, it doesn't matter. I've got my little friend group. I've got people that care. One more. Can well, you the important thing is what you just said. You know, I'd rather have, I'd rather be myself and have five friends than mm -hmm. try to fit in or be somebody else and have yeah. twenty or a hundred or whatever. Like it's uh, because in the end, you you can't. You know, I mean, these this is the classic old story we see movies on all the time where the, you know, the fake people or whatever. You know, this yeah. superficial as hell, uh, trying to you know fit in and do and be popular or whatever yeah and then um, into the film they're like huh i'm yeah. being myself and 
I really enjoy that. Like it's cheesy, but it oh. really is true. <laughs> it's so it, simple. We we complicate the fuck out of it. <laughs> life is a lot more simple than people think. It really is. I, yeah. It's getting really philosophical. I love it. I but, know, right? Yeah. Well, like, it's, like, it's uh, yeah. I appreciate your time, man. It's it's been uh, it's been great. Any time. This has been fun. I had yeah, no idea I'm, what to expect, and I have rambled for three hours, two hours. How long has this been? Oh, it's great. No, you're fine. I mean, we talked about it's. Been, I did this all the time. Like, see, once you get two and a half, two and a half hours. I knew exactly how this was going to go. Like at the start, I was quite quiet, quite slow, and then, uh, yeah. like an hour or two in, and you can't shut me up. <laughs> that's how it works. I mean, that's uh, that's how it is. That's how it is in real life. If you and I met in yeah. person, this is a very similar kind of thing that would have happened. This is the the other thing I love about airsoft. It attracts people from all walks of life, you know, all ages, 100%. and yeah. you know, people I would never usually interact with. I've made great friends with, right? I, you know, people from different age groups, people from different, you know. Like areas of Scotland, I've got people up in Fife, got people over in Falkirk, you know, yeah. from all over. Uh, I've got good friends with uh, people I have no right knowing I'm their best friends with, you know. It's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh-huh. Well, where, uh, tell everybody where they can find you online. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Rachel Airsoft0451. Uh, most of my sort of handles go under that. Uh, I don't really post it anywhere other than Facebook and Instagram. Occasionally Reddit, but Reddit's a bit of a shithole. Yeah, it uh, is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll see me if you're in like... If you see me on a... You'll probably see me on Discords and that. I'm, a, I'm in a, a quite a ton of UK ones. Uh, nice. But yeah, if you're in Scotland and you're see me floating about fields, say hi, drop kick me or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm out there somewhere. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you, bro. It's, uh, it's, you know, definitely, um, you know, I made a new friend in Scotland, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I appreciate it. If we're ever in Scotland, you should come to our local airsoft sites and see what oh, it's yeah. like on the other side of the pond. Yeah, no worries at all. Nice speaking with you. Nice meeting you. All right, Rachel, have a good one.